What's up, Buffalo Fanatics? Josh Allen here. Just wanted to say uh, go Bills. Yo, welcome to another edition of the Buffalo Fanatics Riders Club. Yo, you are joined by yours truly, Rev Rose in the house, and I've got my man right beside me, none other than Mr. Zach Vaughn. Zach, what's going on, man? How you doing this morning, baby? I'm just psyched to be talking Bills football again with the week until the preseason starts. We're just getting closer and closer to this actual season. I just can't wait. Man, look here. I, I'm, I'm pumped, man. I can't wait for the season. Um, this is this is something that we've been waiting for for a very long time. You know, the offseason has been long. Um, it's been drooling. It's been grueling, not drooling. Maybe some of you guys have been drooling about, about the regular season. You know what I'm saying? But it's been a grueling process so far, but we are excited about it. Um, and we are excited to bring you uh, some more Buffalo Bills content. In case you didn't know what this is, this is the Buffalo Fanatics Writers Club brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. And while you guys are here on a Saturday morning, do us this big favor. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and turn on those bell notifications so you can get everything uh, popping when it relates to the Buffalo Bills and the Fanatics. Yo, we are joined today by some very special guests. I've got in the background my man Evan Harrington. You guys know him very well. You know, he had uh, a chance to actually go to the blue, I mean, the red and blue scrimmage last night. And so he's going to hop on here shortly and give us his, his tidbits and his thoughts. Uh, just a little recap about what he saw last night, which was so unfortunate for me because I'm, I'm, I'm all the way in Texas, Zach, and I didn't get a chance to watch it. I didn't get a chance to see anything, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling through my Twitter feed and everything else like that. She's trying to catch um, a little bit of news and notes and the highlights about the scrimmage. So I'm excited that we only have, what, a week next week is the real kickoff to the Buffalo Bills preseason. How do you feel about that, Zach? Like I said, I'm, I'm just excited for there to be some sort of actual football on the field, especially considering some of the position battles we got going on. Yeah. to see how they do in live reps against other players trying to fight for spots on their rosters to right. see what happens. Yes. So it's, it's 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 an exciting time for Bills fans. It's an exciting time for Bills fans. So um, you guys keep a lock right here. We're about to get it popping. And on top of that, you know, I've got some more guests. I've got my man Kev Syracuse. He's in the background. He's chilling. He's going to hop on. We're going to talk about some Bills content. We're going to talk about uh, an article that he published you know, about the defensive line rankings in the National Football League. So you stay tuned for that. And on top of that, I've got another guest, very special guest coming in uh, all the way from the UK, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that's my man, yes, and T. Harris. You know, he's going to be joining us here shortly um, to talk about some very interesting things that you guys hadn't even thought about before. And we're going to go all the way in the way back machine, the way back machine um, a little bit later and talk about some special Buffalo Bills players, maybe some of your favorites. I know this is probably one of his favorites too. So you, you keep it like I mean, you are in the right place at the right time, uh, talking to the right people, man. This is the Buffalo Fanatics, and you, know, I am excited about it. So, Zach, you know, I, um, did you get a chance? Uh, I mean, I know you're in Rochester. Did you get a chance last night to go to, go to the game? Uh, no, I was working, and they did it at the stadium in Buffalo. So, I mean. I just couldn't get the time off to go there. I mean, I heard it was pretty loud. I heard that there were 35,000, almost 36,000 fans in attendance for a practice. And that yeah, just wow. goes to show how much Bills Mafia loves their team and how much they love football. And I also heard something interesting about that practice and that Josh Allen ran onto the field in a red helmet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Hold on, we're, we're, we're gonna talk about that, man, because that was nuts. Um, that that was nuts, man. And uh, uh, I've got a lot. To, I've got a lot to say about that one. And uh, matter of fact, so 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 without any further ado, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring on we're gonna bring on Evan because he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna talk about about what he saw. Um, so Evan, man, hop your butt back up in here, man. Come on in here. Where you at? There you are. What's going on, fellas. Good morning. How you guys doing? Man, we chilling. We chilling. I'm excited. Um, how you feel, man? You've had a you've had a long week, man. Yeah, I have had a long week. Whether that's been you know hopping on shows like this, writing up some articles for Fan Sided, running the BF Twitter, just 
you know, what it, whatever it's been, it's just been, you know, a hectic week, but in a good way for Buffalo Bills content. And, you know, when the season's rolling right around, that's when content starts rolling back up. Uh, sure. You know, that's what we do over here at Buffalo Fanatics. We jump on top of what content that needs to be covered. We're all doing that. But, yeah, you know, so I was at the Blue versus Red training camp mm -hmm. uh, scrimmage yesterday. I, I thought it was outstanding. Um, like like Zach mentioned down there, there's 35 plus thousand fans and they even sold 70,000 tickets. Just the other 35,000 just didn't show up. So like yeah. that place could have been even more filled. So, you know, that's something that was interesting as well. But yeah, no, that place was packed last night. Um, I didn't even think that the 300s were going to be open just because normally they aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, but the 300s were open last night and, you know, not, not a huge amount of the 300s were filled, but I would say probably almost one to two fourths of the 300s were filled. So that was awesome to see both sides were, uh, yeah. but yeah, the, the whole lower bowl was just filled and packed with Bill's mafia, which was That's awesome. Crazy, to see man. What, what, what was the energy like here. in that place, man? What was the energy like? I, I know it, I know it had to been freaking like off the charts. It was off the charts, man. Um, you know, those fans were just going wild, whether that was for Josh coming out the tunnel with that red helmet, you know, little shades back to the 1990s. Uh, -huh. uh, you got Stefan Diggs coming out. He's always a fan favorite, so he'll always draw a lot of fans. And then, you know, Von Miller coming out. Even though Von didn't participate in practice yesterday, he had a vet rest day. Yeah, uh, Fans are still going to go crazy for Von Miller because rightfully so. Von Miller is that guy. Right. Just any like This is the thing with the Buffalo Bills now. It doesn't matter how much of a star player you are, if that makes any sense. Like, you can... Like, there's levels of players on this team. You're Von Miller, Stefan Diggs, Josh Allen's, right? They're always going to get cheered no matter what. But then yeah. you got guys like like Gabe Davis, Dawson Knox, even the running backs, some of the offensive linemen like like Dawkins or Spencer Brown or Morris, just in general. These yeah. guys are getting as loud as of applause as some of our best star players would back in the drought days mm -hmm. just because, you know, like, the Bills have gotten to that point where, you know, fringe starters are just – quality players are now superstar level players um for the buffalo bills and i think i think that's just awesome how much bills mafia embraces every single player that's what's up man um bills mafia is 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 that's 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 the great thing about about this fan base man is that they they embrace whoever joins the squad and shows love to the team man and 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 Bills, Bills Mafia is going to continue to do that all the time um but hold on we, real real quick man we've got a surprise guest man popping in to the stream um, i'm not sure if he's actually coming in to, to actually uh make an appearance or he's taking care of some things on the back end i'm not too sure evan you may want to check that out for us um but yeah you're right man um, matter of fact hold on i see some people here in the, in the comments saying that we're not live on youtube is that correct i just checked it out and, and, I, and I saw us live so i'm not too sure about that man uh, you guys you guys uh give us give us some more um insight on that man let us know if we're actually live on youtube um because i just i just threw it on right now and i and i could have sworn i saw us going live on youtube so just let us know if, if if we are or if we're not if we're not hop on to the bf uh facebook page okay so anyway so man we're gonna, we're gonna keep it moving though we're gonna keep it moving uh i'm glad though evan that you had mentioned the you had mentioned josh allen because so, so he came out man and he he uh he he set he set social media on fire right so like as soon as he came on man we saw josh allen Running out <laughs> in the Bills red helmet. This this is what it looked like, man. In case you guys didn't see, yeah, you guys catch that right there. Yeah, so so you see him right there with the with the Bills red helmet. And uh, I I I wanted I wanted to bring up what uh what <laughs> what we put out on on BF man uh, yesterday because that was hilarious to me. Like you know I know a lot of people were going were going pretty crazy, and I'm gonna try to pull up uh I'm trying to share my screen. Evan. We, you know, uh, a lot of people were going pretty crazy about it because obviously, you know, we, there was a whole lot of talk about about the Bills and and this these this, these red helmets, right? Uh, everybody wanted to see what was going on if the Bills were going to actually bring out the uh, the classics and all that kind of stuff, but they didn't. They didn't do it. And so, what actually happened, man, was was Josh Allen. He, he ran out in this Bills red helmet, and everybody went bananas. They went crazy. They went nuts. Um, which is to be expected, man. But I don't know, man. I, I may, maybe I feel some type of way. I didn't. I didn't too much care for it, man. I didn't too much care for yeah. it. Man. Yeah. What, what, what do you think, man? Zach, give me your thoughts, man. When you when you saw that helmet. I mean, the helmet that I saw that Josh Allen wore. What, 
My first thought was, uh, well, whoever did it missed a white stripe in the middle of the helmet, like yes, something, or yeah. they didn't clearly didn't model it after the '90s ones. Like either way, the original traditional red helmet that everyone imagines when they say the Bills are gonna bring it back, right? They it, it, that's better. That yeah, but see, and then look, look, see, I'm gonna share this because this is what this is what this is what's so funny because the LBF man. So we put this out yesterday, and we like, look, here's the difference. Here's the difference right here. You see, this is it's, it's a don't let that monstrosity of, of thin blue stripes fool you into what a good red helmet looks like. So this is this is what's not it right here. You see that this is what's not it. That thing right there. That's that's not it, man. Um, so you you got. You've got you've got Josh coming out here with the red hip. Now, now the visor was on. The visor was on point. I love the visor, but this right here, these, these thin blue stripes right here, man, just did absolutely nothing for me. Nothing for me at all. But then, if you look at at this right here, on the left hand side, you see that, that that's what you're looking for. That's what you want. You you got the blue stripe in the middle, but then you got it flanked by the two thin blue, white stripes. That see that 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 makes it a whole. Look a whole lot better. It sets it off with the with the white face mask. It's not too much blue on red. You don't want a whole lot of blue on the red, man. You you want a, just a touch of it with that white to pop it off. That's what you're looking for. They 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 could have left that in the locker room, man. <laughs> <It's up to laughs> me. They could have could have left that in the side storage right before you get to man, the actual yeah, locker room. Left, man, they could have left that thing where it was. And I, I get it, man. You know they're trying to bring some excitement, but yo. I don't know why they they, they should have they should have checked it you know had somebody look at it first and be like yo that, that ain't no that's well, not no it. so you know what they obviously probably have something in store for us because you know yeah. you don't just kind of reveal your your big your big pull your big weapon right so they obviously have a different helmet in the future that they're gonna showcase and drop you know for the Bills Mafia and I don't think that one's it Josh Allen just they probably have a couple like like designs back there. Josh just grabbed the one that's definitely not going to be it. That was probably like the one that didn't make it to the meeting room. And Josh is like, all right, I'm just going to bring this out just to tease the fans, just showcasing like, okay, something in the future is coming. He had, he had to have, right? I mean, so because that, that's my own, that's the only line of thinking I have, man, is, is that they had to bring it out just to kind of give us a little taste or a glimpse of, 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 of the future. But I hope that ain't the future. I hope it ain't that. Okay, because they could leave that back. I hope they, they sur surely they're going to fix it, right? Because they're, they're going to hear it from the fans. And uh, I don't know, man, what I mean, like, what was, I wonder what the pulse was with the rest of the fan base if they actually liked that blue stripe. I can't, I can't stand it, man. It made me want to throw up. I mean, it was cool. It was, they popped, I, just, I just didn't care for it. Yeah, from the fans around me, like they were sitting around me yesterday, it was kind of like hit or miss. Yeah. Did, could you get a good glimpse of it from, from your vantage point? I mean, like, like the blue stripes and whatever, could you actually see it good from where you were? um so i got a little bit of a vantage point from it uh i so i would say like directly on the 50 yard line okay. so like seeing it from a little distance away like i couldn't re really pull it in but i saw it a little bit um uh, i didn't really know like like the, the actual details on the blue stripes yeah. um but later i did see it i yeah, just I knew that it was a red yeah, helmet i figured it would have been tough you know right you know, when you're watching the game i mean i mean you're watching them come out the tunnel you probably couldn't really see it clearly but all you see is this red helmet everybody goes nuts which I, I'm, I'm cool with that i understand that you know, another thing I don't like, I just don't like the red on red. I'm just not feeling like the red helmet with the red with the red jersey. What do What do you think? No. I, I, I just seems like it's just too much red for me. I think I've I've been kind of vocal about this on Twitter in the past, but I think it's more better in Madden having the all red with the red helmets and the color rush just to like mess around in Madden. Yeah than it would be in real life, even though I'd like to see it for one game, just just because. Right. Like, for the memes, but... I, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you're going to have red on red, you need to at least match the red. Th the thank you, Zach. Red. Thank you. Th I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I was going to say that the reds don't even match. It, it, it looks completely off. I'm like, what's going on here, guys? What's, what's going on here? Like, like no, they, they that, that was a fail to me. Now, if we can get Josh Allen busting out the visor for at least one game, oh my gosh, dude! Like, I don't know, man. I don't know what. I don't know why he's not doing that, man. He's. I mean, he practices with it. You know, he's in camp, dude. Just bust it out for a game, man, or something. I don't know if there's any rules for that. I don't. I don't know, but I love the visor, man. I love the visor look. Ev, now, brother, 
I, I need you to do me this favor, man. I, so, 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 talk to me about 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 the scrimmage, man. Talk to me about because you because you because you 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 took over you took over Bill's Twitter. I mean, uh, Fanatics Twitter uh, yesterday. Tell me some of your some of your highlights, man. Give me give me a recap of what you saw um, from from last night's uh, scrimmage. Yeah, before I get into anything, if you guys also want to check out what I was tweeting live from the scrimmage, go follow the, the Buffalo Fanatics Twitter. Uh, yeah, there, no you know, there's a good a good about fifteen to twenty tweets um, just of you know in depth coverage about what was going on yesterday because obviously it wasn't live streamed, it wasn't televised, you know, nothing about that. You know, just because it's practice and you know right. teams could watch and stuff. But you know, there's a couple videos up there. Maybe it gave Davis touchdown. Maybe a James Cook. Uh, you know. Oh. Nice Wait dumping catch. I mean, go go look, go check it out. But um, you know, my takeaway is from the camp overall that day. I'll start with the offensive of line uh, because one of our starters actually returned, um, and that starter was Ryan Bates, and you know he got plugged in at right guard. So our starting okay. offensive of line yesterday for a little bit was Deion Dawkins at left tackle, Bobby Hart still at left guard, Mitch Morse at center. Uh, then you have Ryan Bates at right guard, and then David Questenberry still at right tackle. So the offensive line is slowly getting more healthier. Bates didn't play the entire scrimmage from what I saw. Greg Van Rotten actually got a little reps at right guard as well. So, you know, he was getting a little little time played uh, with the ones. I don't know if Cody Ford was in there at all. He could have been. Um, I was trying to, like, puzzle it all out just because you're going, you're going from first team to second team to third team. All these guys just keep rolling out with one another. But, you know, that's huge for the Buffalo Bills offensive line. As of right now, three of our five linemen are healthy, and they're building that chemistry, building that continuity uh, going into the preseason. Just, you know, Spencer Brown's slowly coming back, so he'll be another player that will be back on the starting offensive line. And Roger Saffold, even though he's still a little bit away, you know, with that rib injury, he is still progressing and rehabbing individually, and he'll be back sooner rather than later. So I believe that is huge for the Buffalo Bills offensive line. Yeah. Overall, I thought the offensive line looked solid yesterday. I thought they had their moments where they obviously got beat and they didn't, you know, look as good as they probably could have been. Uh, but overall, Josh Allen had enough time to get the ball out. Uh, no matter, this is first, second, and third teams. Uh, the whole offensive line in general looked very solid. Uh, there's one rep in particular that caught my eye. And it was that, uh, you know, Von Miller wasn't practicing yesterday, so Greg Rousseau kind of had all the eyes on him. He was yeah. the number one pass rusher yesterday for the Buffalo Bills. And he had a rep against David Questenberry and just blew him over, just got right by him and got right to Josh Allen for a sack. So, yeah. you know, again, Gregory Rousseau making a statement on David Questenberry as he has had his number the past few days in camp. Uh, so you know that was that was huge and a big takeaway in my opinion uh, for a guy like Greg Rousseau on the offensive line. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the the, the O line man and and uh, dude because you know um, I was I, I don't want to see Bobby Hart man I do not want to see Bobby Hart man at all on this offensive line but I mean it is what it is we got to we got to deal with it just due due to the injuries but um, I was also curious to see how how uh, Questenberry was going to do on the right on on the right side man um, in kind of like live somewhat live game action um but man um i just don't know man i'm still i'm still concerned about this whole line i just can't i just can't get over it even i mean i know i know the depth is 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 what it is but like you had mentioned even before and you know I, I think uh uh one of our last shows having the, the depth is even is even you know hurt and dealing with injuries man so that's 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 still a a, a big question mark for me man but it was good to see that bates is back in um um because that's at least, at least having him back is gonna is gonna make the O line a little bit more uh, stable, somewhat. You know, having him back, um, Questenberry, man. So like you say that that, that Greg Root, I mean, Greg, I almost called him Greg Root, <laughs> Groot. I'm thinking Groot and and Russo at the same time. So anyway, so uh, so so Greg was so man. So he had a he had a he had a pretty good game against against uh against old Questenberry. Yeah, he had that uh, that one rep in particular where he yeah. he did beat Questenberry and he did get to Josh Allen for the sack. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, more, you know, pointing towards, uh, Gregory Rousseau's progression, in my opinion, than yeah. just how bad the offensive line is, uh, as of, as of right now, just because, I mean, when you look at a guy like David Questenberry, I mean, he played, you know, all 16 games, all 16, 17 games last year for the Tennessee Titans as the starting right tackle. Right. Uh, the, the guy can play. I mean, he's not, yeah, he's, he's a, not a scrub. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. He's just he's a he's a veteran starter in this league. Uh, and I know Von Miller and Gregory Rousseau and some others here and there have gotten to him at points and times in camp. But you also got to look at Brandon Bean has built up this defensive line just to do that. Brandon Bean has built up this defensive line to get after quarterbacks like Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, you know, I hate to say this, but like that 13 seconds doesn't happen if we have that pass rush. You know, we yeah, have guys 100%. like year two Greg or so, uh, Von Miller, year year four at Oliver. These players on this roster need to step up and need to get to the quarterback. And you're seeing that in practice once in a while. Um, and obviously, it you know, this is an interesting thing. When you're watching the scrimmage, you don't mm -hmm. even notice that the, the D-line gets pressures on the quarterback sometimes because Josh Allen is just so good at evading pressure right. that it just kind of looks like he's just back there toying around with the defensive line. So there were points in times where I didn't even notice that they might have counted a sack or there was a quote-unquote pressure from a certain player just because I'm just so used to Josh Allen getting away from these defenders and just kind of doing his thing back there. So, I mean – so you so you talk so the D line I mean this is uh, you're right this this is what we this is what we, we what we've expected right we've been wanting to see a dominant defensive line for quite some time now and and we've seen that Brandon Bean has been trying to trying to add that right trying to add those pieces that it just it, but it just hasn't been able to to come together but now this year it looks like you know um just by all the reports and everything like that that this defensive line this year man is it could be potentially dominant which is a good thing and this is exactly what we need man and and, and you know I, it's, it's, it's hard for me you know to go back to that 13 seconds game man because it really it really makes me mad when i think about it but you're right though I mean, if we had that type of a pass rush um it, none of this would be happening right now i mean we, we would probably be hoisting the, the lombardi trophy to be honest man if we had that type probably. of pass rush and so so having so having having a guy like von miller having a guy like like greg Rousseau come up you know and, and make up make up improvements in his in his year two uh, in addition to guys like ed oliver who who i've heard is, is just having an extraordinary camp and the rest of the defensive line it's it's nothing but great news uh, for Bills fans going forward here into the season, and um, this is a perfect segue because, and I, and you know, I'm I'm going to jump around here, here a little bit on our order, but I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring Kev on because uh, Kev, you know, he had he had uh, put out an article, man, about 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 the defensive line rankings, and, and Evan, we're gonna we're gonna get back into some of the some of the other things that you had seen um, in in the red and blue scrimmage, but I want to bring on Kev here here right now, and, and Evan, you you can stay on here too. Uh, yes, Kev, come on here, man. So you so you were talking about. Um, you had written an article, man, about the defensive line and about the top defensive linemen in the National Football League here this year. And you had ranked them. And I think you, you had even included the defensive ends, the pass rushers, and the defensive tackles, man. Uh, uh, give us a little bit uh, uh, of a recap, man, about about uh, about that article here. And welcome to the show, Kev, by the way. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, so I did the top 20 edge rushers just because there, there are so many edge rushers between defensive ends and outside linebackers. So I did the, the top 20 edge rushers and then top 10 defensive tackles. So it yeah. took a while ranking 30 players. Uh -huh. And I wrote about 20 of them and then 20 through 11 for the defensive ends. Those I just listed. And then I mm -hmm. explained 10 through 1. So – that came out Thursday because this week I also did the article about Tavon Austin and Cody Ford, which we expanded on from our spaces last week. Right. That was really interesting. But, um, yeah, the, the rankings took uh, – the offensive and the defensive lines have probably taken me the longest just because there are so many parts on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's, there's quite a bit. And, and, and uh, man, I, I appreciate your, your, your work, man, because – this was tough, dude. This 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 is this has to be tough, man. Going through the National Football League and looking at the defensive line, and, and I noticed that you you included offensive. I mean, offense. You, you you included the outside linebackers in into the pass rush um, um, piece as well. And so let's 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 just jump at it. Let's just jump right into it, man. So you 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 list the top twenty pass rushers here, and uh, you start off by by having a couple of uh, matter of fact, a few pass rushers here are, are kind of like on the outside looking in. Um, you had listed uh, defensive end Jadavian Clowney, along with Brian Burns and Leonard Floyd. So, uh, talk to me about 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 why these three guys in particular didn't make your your uh, your list. Yeah, these guys. Once I got into it, I realized that there are so many dominant pass rushers in our league, and yeah. I was looking at the stats, and really, I, I don't see these guys being top twenty pass rushers. They're good, but they're not great, and. 
I decided to put them on the outside looking in, but I felt like I needed to include them just because they did have solid years. Uh, they all had nine to nine and a half sacks, and someone like a Jadavion Clowney is a bigger name, and when yeah. you think of pass rushers, some people might think of him. So I wanted to at least include them, but then I also included the paragraph where I said, let's not forget that we have a bunch of rookies that are looking to make an impact this year. Mm -hmm. Guys like Aiden Hutchinson, Trayvon Walker, Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, and that's just to name a few because there are a lot of pass rushers taking this yeah. year in the draft. So, again, I didn't want to just throw these guys into the top 20, especially when they have guys coming right up behind them who, like I said, they might get into the top 20 before someone like a Brian, Bur Brian Burns will. Yeah, and, and speaking of Trayvon Walker, I mean, I mean we've seen it um... – uh, in in the uh, the game, the the preseason game, man, against against the uh, the, the Raiders, I mean, so he 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 had his first sack um, of his of his young NFL career, even though it was preseason, uh, right off the top. I don't even know if it was like like one of the one of the first plays or so like that in the game. I don't know if you guys caught that, man. But so so Trayvon Walker, man, is 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 already showing himself to to potentially be uh, or to prove that that he is worthy that he was worthy of that number one pick. Um, so let's 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 start here at the bottom of the top 20 here that you listed and um you, you went ahead and at 20 you went ahead and listed harold landry from the tennessee titans man what do you see about harold landry that that gives you a um a reason to put him in the top 20. i think harold landry is one of those guys that people might not think of as a top 20 pass rusher but the more i looked into it with the numbers i was like no nah, i think this guy deserves to be top 20 because he had a breakout year last year i believe he had 12 and a half sacks I'm going to have to uh, – I'll, I'll confirm that because, like I said, I didn't write about these guys, so I don't right. have their stats offhand. Um, but he did have a solid year with Tennessee, and I think he's only going to get better. And someone who I talked about with the defensive tackles, Jeffrey Simmons, mm -hmm. I think those two guys are going to be key pieces to Tennessee's defense moving forward. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking up – so, yeah, he did have 12 sacks, man. Harold Landry had 12 sacks last year. Um, very, you know that that defense, that Tennessee defensive line, man, is is very sneaky, man. They, they, these guys have, I mean, they've they've been a thorn in our side, and that right, Zach, for so long. Um, mm -hmm. and, and guys like like Harold Landry, man, and, and Jeffrey Simmons, are just ridiculously underrated, in my opinion. What do you think about that? Yeah, Tennessee is definitely definitely has an underrated defense, especially on the front seven, like we saw last year in that Tennessee Bills Monday Night Football game. Jeffrey Simmons was the reason that that QB sneak got blown up. I mean, besides yes. Jalen slipping, it was like he was in the lane. He caused it, yeah. Jalen ended uh -huh. up trying to get into. Like, he's been, he was a low-key, sneaky pick. Like, Jeffrey Simmons, I forgot where he was drafted. I know he was a first-round pick, and then he fell because of an injury, but mm -hmm. I think that the Titans would take him again in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jeffrey Simmons – is is a dominant defensive tackle man dominant defensive tackle. I, I was that dude that dude is scary good man he is he is scary good but good, like he just goes under the radar i don't know why people like like don't don't consider him like in one of the top uh, uh defensive tackles in the, in the national football league the dude is ridiculously good and we saw it in that game he completely first of all he diagnosed the play at the, at the line at the uh in the goal line right by 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 stunt he he he, he slid inside and then he just beat Deion Dawkins, man. He he just beat him off off the snap, um, and blew the whole line up, causing Josh Allen to slip, man, at the goal line. And 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 but Jeffrey Simmons is that dude, man. He's 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 always been a dominant uh, defensive tackle um, in the National Football League, even though it's been early in his career. Now, um, Evan, man, um, I want I want to ask you, man, about about some of your your thoughts here on, on this on this list here. Um, what I, what I see first of all, I, I see that 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 Zach, I mean that that Kevin has put put at top ten. He put Chandler Jones, man. The Chandler Jones comes in at number ten on the list. Uh, the defensive end who is playing now with the Raiders. And uh, what what do you think about about Chandler Jones, man, and, and his potential? Because I know a lot of Bills fans here in the free agency before we even you know got word that Von Miller was even on our radar. I mean, a lot of people were clamoring for Chandler Jones, myself included. I thought that Chandler Jones was going to be a guy that the Bills would have would have signed um, in free agency. Uh, especially just to me, it just made sense coming back home. But he ended up signing with the Raiders, man. So, what do you think about Chandler Jones, um, uh, especially being being listed in the top ten of of, of uh, these these pass rushers pass rushers here in the National Football League? Yeah, a guy like Chandler Jones at ten, I definitely, in my opinion, would not put him top ten just because of the complete drop off that I saw out of his game last year. Uh, he started off the season with what 
what, uh, five sacks in week one, and then he ended the season with like 10 or 11. But there was just a complete drop off in just his overall game. Like, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I would take Brian Burns over Chandler Jones. I think Brian Burns does everything better than Chandler Jones at his complete game right now. Just his speed rush, his power rush, his swim move, his ability to get the quarterback, and just his dominance as of right now. If we're talking career, oh, well, Chandler Jones, man, he's a Hall of Famer. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I just don't think Chandler Jones has that same pep in his step that he did um, just a couple of years ago because I believe that those injuries that he suffered over the past couple of seasons really injured his injured his game. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think he was rightfully deserved of the contract that he got with the Raiders. Like when you look at guys like Von Miller and Chandler Jones, I think Von Miller is still a top top seven, top six pass rusher in the league. Yeah, I don't think Chandler Jones is rightfully right there with Von Miller. Uh, I think there's a big step in their age or with their age, them being around the same age. I still think there's a big difference in their game. Um, mm-hmm. But I get it though. I get why Chandler Jones is at 10 on your list just because he's been doing it for so long and right. he still had a decent year last year. Uh, but yeah. I mean, because like from like 10 to 20, there's so many good pass rushers. You can really filter it out however you like. It's just yeah. kind of preference based, you know? Right. That's just my opinion on it. Yeah. And then, and then, um, um, you mean, you- as we as we go up, you know, from 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 uh, twenty to ten, and we start looking at some guys that that uh, that you know are, again, man, like this is this is a tough one. this is tough to do, Kev. I mean, so I, I applaud you for it, man, because there's yeah, no, so many it's, good it's pass rushers, man, in, in the National Football League. Um, you got Trey Hendrickson coming in at nine, uh, man, and Trey Hendrickson, man, is he was another guy that I, I want I think was on the Bills radar when he came out. I'm not too sure about that. I, I know uh, I, I've always been a fan of him. Um, coming out of, out of um, the Saints, but tell me about about Trey Hendrickson, man, and what do you what do you what did you see out of Trey Hendrickson last year that made you put him in the top ten at, at number nine? So Trey Hendrickson has really come on over the last couple of years. So he had a big year with New Orleans in twenty twenty. He had thirteen and a half sacks, and then he got rewarded by Cincinnati with a four year sixty million dollar contract. And I'm not sure exactly where that ranks in terms of highest paid defensive ends. But mm-hmm. it's got to be up there in one of those top tiers. And so far, he is making it, you know, he's he's making it worth while so far with a 14-sack season last year. And he was a key component to the Bengals' Super Bowl run last year as well. Yeah, Trey Hendrickson, man, is 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 a very, very good um, pass rusher, man. Very, very underrated as well, man. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking up, I'm, I'm looking up his contract details just trying to see where he where he kind of slots in there. Um, because he did get paid, man. He he definitely got paid, and I'm trying to look at here. I'm looking at at, at spot rack right now, trying to see if if they list it, because uh, typically they do. Um, but I, I don't currently I don't currently see it right now. Um, trying to get an idea of where he slots in there, man. But yo, he he's he's a good he's a very good pass rusher, very good pass rusher at, um, in my opinion as well. And then and then we we kind of climb up the list here, we climb up the ladder. We've got you got you got Cameron Jordan from the Saints um, coming in at number seven, who I love the cam jordan has been doing it for a very long time yeah he's 33 years old man but but the dude can still play he's proven it and you've got him here at number seven now what are your thoughts about that or just kind of give us some insight as to why you put him here at number seven and oddly enough while you were saying that i just found out that trey hendrickson is the ninth highest paid defensive end so oh man that's perfect <laughs> according to my rankings that's that's perfect. perfect right on spot on man spot on yeah um so with cameron jordan This guy has been one of the most consistent pass rushers over the last decade. So the Saints drafted him in 2011, and he's been a mainstay for the Saints ever since. And he's had 12 and a half sacks. Well, he had 12 and a half sacks last year, and that was the fourth time in the last five years that he's finished with 12 or more sacks. And I feel like he doesn't get talked about enough because before I looked into that, I didn't even realize that myself. Like, I always knew Cameron Jordan is a solid pass rusher, but – if you were to tell me that 33-year-old Cameron Jordan has put up 12 or more sacks in four out of the last five seasons, I kind of had to do a double take at first. I was like, man, I did not realize that this guy has been that good. Right. He's 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 been he's been that good, and he's consistently good, man. That's 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 how you know you're you know you've got a great pass rusher, man. Is, is the consistency factor in here, man? And Cam Jordan, and, and probably you know being being in New Orleans, you know, uh, over the past couple of years, you know, they haven't really been been doing that well. Um, it's kind of you know played into maybe some recency bias, man. But Cam Jordan has been solid for a very long time, and so now we we climb up here. Um, you've got you've got Joey Bosa here at number six. Joey Bosa, man, is is a is a. I love Bosa, man. I do. 
Uh, the dude is phenomenal, man. But but uh, you know maybe some people would kind of push back a little bit, man, by 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 saying that you know he's 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 never really been a huge sack guy. I mean he's you know I mean he he's he's consistent and he does double digit sacks, but he's not really a huge volume sack guy. I mean what what, what would you say about that? Yeah, exactly. That's why I left him out of the top five. So surprisingly, Bosa has never finished a season with more than 12 and a half sacks. So really, Cam Jordan gets more sacks than Joey Bosa. And you think based on their body compositions and just the hyper on Joey Bosa, if I were to ask who gets more sacks without even knowing, I, I feel like a lot of people would say, oh, yeah. Joey Bosa. Yeah. But no, it's Cameron Jordan. Um, but I think Bosa still has the upside. He still has that dominant pass rushing capabilities. And like I said, with my Chandler Jones paragraph, I think that having Khalil Mack now is only going to help elevate Bosa's game. And I think it's going to be beneficial for both sides where Khalil Mack can help Joey Bosa establish himself as a top five pass rusher. And for someone like Khalil Mack, who I had on the outside looking in, I had him at number 12. Yeah, 12, uh uh-huh. I think Bosa can help him elevate his game and reestablish himself as a top 10 pass rusher. And with the Chandler Jones thing, I think him and Max Crosby are going to do the same exact thing for each other. Yeah. I mean, when you have, when you have those, those, those bookend pass rushes like that, man, I mean, it's just going to bode well for him. And and then on top of that, when you think about it, they're, they're, they're both in the AFC West. So good luck, man. Good, good luck to, to all the quarterbacks in the AFC West. I mean, you've got to, you got to face uh, uh, Chandler Jones and Max Crosby from the Raiders. And then you got to go to, to the Chargers and, and face Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. Good luck with that. Um, and then, you know, so I'm looking here at the list, man, and, and I see somebody on this list um, that made it in the top five. And Bill's Mafia, you're going to be very, very happy about this. It's Greg Rousseau. No, I'm just kidding. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not Greg Rousseau. Kev, go ahead and tell me, man, who, who you've got slotted here in the, in the top four. So at number four, plays put, Buffalo Bills. Go ahead. At number four, I put Shaq Lawson. <laughs> Shaq, you, Shaq definitely is up here in the top five, man. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, yeah. um, Von Miller. The Bills finally have that dominant pass rusher. Should we go as far as saying that this is the closest thing to Bruce Smith that we've had? Oh, man. Bruce Smith? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to go crazy. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen him play yet for, for the Bills, so I'm going to pause. I know how great and how elite Von Miller is. I mean, he's he's a future Hall of Famer, first ballot in my opinion, no doubt. But, uh, yeah, I would pump the brakes just a little bit until he plays. Uh, I, I want to see how he, how he, how he meshes well with um, this team. But yeah, man, he's, he's definitely worthy of the top four. Go ahead. Yeah. With all these uh, Super Bowl vibes, you know, I'm, I'm just getting all the 90 vibes, but <laughs> you the quarterback with yeah. Josh Allen. You have definitely. Andre Reed with Stefan Diggs, Bruce Smith or Von Miller is a Bruce Smith. Maybe James Cook could be Thurman Thomas or oh, man. Like, and Singletary together. Hey. <laughs> hey, he just might be. You never, you never know, man. And I love Thurman Thomas too, by the way, my, one of my, my favorite all time Bills players, Thurman Thomas, man, was my guy growing up. So yeah, Von Miller number four, man. So tell me, tell me about Von Miller and why you decided to put him at number four. But then you got you got Chandler Jones way down at number ten. So so what's what separates the the two? Yeah, well, I think going back to what Evan said, that Chandler Jones has had that little bit of a slip up over the last couple of years, um, but he's still one of the. I don't want to say one of the most elite, but he's still in that second or third tier of pass rushers. I think Von Miller is still showing that he is in his prime. I mean, Mm -hmm. you look at what he did for the Rams last year from the back half of the season into the playoff, but then the Super Bowl, you could tell that Von Miller is just that dude. I mean, you always have to keep your eye out on him. And I'm not saying that Chandler Jones isn't, but like with what Evan was saying with those injuries, he's kind of been slowed up a bit. But with Von Miller, he's just still so dominant. And and how old is he now? 32, 33. 33. Yeah. 33. 33, so he's been up yeah. there in age, but he's really not showing it. And mm-hmm. he talked about how he is just very hard on himself with his workout regimens and just how he takes care of his body. And knock on wood, but like so far it's been paying off because yeah. he, he's just, like I said, he's that dude. Yeah, I, I man, I, I love Vaughn Mano, and I love what he can bring to this team, um, not just on the field, man, but even off the field and, and how he can – See, this is why I think this is this was a perfect signing for, for the Bills, man, is that we have some young pass rushers 
who need grooming. And when you got a guy like like freaking Greg Rousseau, 6'6", 6'7", 270, uh, I think he's even heavier now because he added weight in the offseason. You've got a guy like him, just, just a big mold of clay. These guys need to be refined. And, and, and who else would you rather have just mold these guys um, than have than Vaughn Miller, who who said it, it he, and he said something very interesting. When I, lo- I loved what he said. Um, I think it was after the practice. It, it wasn't this one, but it was it was one previous man talking about about Greg Rousseau, man, and how he's just like, yo, I've been feeding them. What do you say, gunpowder and, and what <laughs> gasoline? Gun gunpowder and gasoline, man. Like, like, dude, I love it, man. Because if Greg Rousseau can get that nasty, oh my gosh, like, like, because he's already, in my opinion, if, like, he hasn't even grown into his body yet. That's what's so ridiculous about it. This dude is, is is already a massive, a massive man, right? But once he grows into his body and he realizes that, he realizes that I am freaking, I'm dominant. Like I like I have the ability to be dominant, and he just takes over. Man, light lights out, man. Getting good luck to any offensive lineman coming up, man. So he just, I think he just needs that edge, and I love that 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 Von Miller is is grooming him because I think that he has the ability to pull the best. Out of Von Miller, what do you think? I mean, I pull the best out of Greg Rousseau. Uh, Zach, what do you think about about that man? First off, I just want to say this, just as sort of a general statement about the top ten, and I know Kevin's already mentioned it and referred to it, but like you talk about guys like Chandler Jones, he is a solid guy. Yes, defensive coordinators or offensive coordinators have to plan for him, but not to the extent that a Von Miller, a Joey Bosa. A Khalil Mack to an extent. So again, rip to uh, all those AFC West quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, but then again, uh, Patrick Mahomes can do just fine. Like, <laughs> but getting back to the point, Von Miller is one of those guys. Offensive coordinators have to literally have to not only plan for them, but they have to emphasize him. You mm-hmm. have to double team him constantly. You have yeah. to shift blocking assignments based on where he is. He is a game changer, just like Joey Bosa. And whoever's on the opposite side of him is going to benefit. Greg Rousseau could have a very good year with Vaughn Miller as his bookend. Ed Oliver can have a very good year opposite Vaughn Miller or on the same side if they do stunts. You can do so much with Vaughn Miller in a lead pass rusher. So much, man. Oh, I love that. It, there is there is there is so much versatility in the defensive line now, man. And and uh, even even Leslie Frazier brought this up uh, in one of his press conferences. He's like, man, I've never had this type of versatility um, in, in the defensive line, you know, since being here in Buffalo. And 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 you when you look at it, even and, and Mitch Moore said, man, you know, look if if you know having 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 uh, uh, Von Miller and and uh, and Ed Oliver. It's like a cheat code, man. If you have them on the same side, you know, and then and then Ed, and then Ed said, you know, shoot, um, it, you know, we, we may be split, split on the opposite sides, you know what I'm saying? Because like you had mentioned, Zach, you've got you got guys, you got the O line has to slide protection to one side or the other, and then stunts. And I've even seen some clips, man, where you've, where you've got you've got Greg Rousseau and next next to Von Miller, you know what I'm saying? And you, and you got the two stunt inside, man. So like, good luck, man. If if this defensive line can really gel and get together, I think it has a chance to be dominant, and that would not have happened. If it were not for the addition of Von Miller onto this team, and I absolutely love what he's bringing so far to the defensive line, and I hope that this defensive line this year can be extremely dominant. But now, Kev, um, continuing here on your on your defensive line rankings, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not, I'm gonna save number one for you guys watching. You have to you have to go ahead and uh, and read the article. I'm not gonna give away number one, but number three, you've got another Bosa. And that's the younger Bosa and Nick Bosa. Tell me about Nick Bosa, man, and why did you um, put him above his brother at number three? So Nick Bosa finally exploded last year. Now, he was a pro bowler in his rookie year in 2019. I believe he had either nine, nine and a half sacks. But last year, he was really that dominant pass rusher that yeah. San Fran hoped that they were getting out of college. He had 15 and a half sacks, 52 tackles, 21 tackles for a loss, which was – tied best in the league, and he had an 88.3 PFF grade. And one of the most amazing stats, he was not penalized once all year. And we're talking about double teams with Von Miller. Nick Bosa was double teamed a lot last year. So for him to stand his ground 
and not do anything to the point where the refs want to call a penalty on him, that's really impress- impressive. Yeah, yeah. Nick Bosa, man, is, 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 a, is a dynamic pass rusher, dynamic pass rusher. The, the 49ers got, got a great one. Um, he, he's, he's, been doing, he's been doing his thing for a long time, man. And so um, the, top, the top two, you're going to have to go ahead and watch this. You, you, you're going to have to go and read the article. I'm not going to give it to you right now. Kev, you, you got you to give all the, all, the, all the viewers, all the listeners, all the watchers, man, you, you got to give them something to, 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 uh, to, 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 to watch. Man, you got you, you to gotta kind of wet their palate a little bit, man, almost kind of give them a little bit, but not too much. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to find out who Kev has put in his top two, you got to go check it out, man. Go check it out. And there's no other place for you to check it out. I mean, you can go to the buffalofanatics.com or or you can check out the BF Network app. And if you've never downloaded the BF Network app, I don't know what's, what's taking you so long. I don't know what you're waiting on. But here's a little bit about the BF Network app and how you can download it. Go ahead and play that for me, Evan. Overdrive. Download that app, man. Download that app so you can find everything um, related to the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Fanatics. You can get, you can find merch on there, man. You can, you can find all of the articles from all of our fantastic contributors on here, uh, including my man Kevin Syracuse. Yo, and, and you know what? I, I wanted to go, kind of go back a little bit to this Von Miller thing because you know I, I'm glowing about. It. I, I love him. I love him. You know what I'm saying? But I do. I did want to ask a question, and I'm gonna pose it to Kevin. Um, this this is this is this is the question that I have about Von Miller here on the Buffalo Bills, man. Like, like, how good is he? Like, how good can how good is he on this team? We know we know he's an elite pass rusher, but how good can he be on this team? I think he's gonna be very good, and I'm not sure if his stats are gonna show it. And by that, I mean I'm not expecting him to come in and get 20 sacks because going back to what we were just talking about, I'm expecting teams to kind of game plan around him and double team him a lot and i think that's going to free up guys like greg rousseau ed oliver daquan jones tim settle shaq lawson jordan phillips pick pick your guy any guy in there now i think von miller can get at least 10 to 15 sacks and i think that's all the bills really need because when the bills signed him the bills needed to finish her right that was the big problem from last year you could not get mahomes on the ground or any quarterback for that matter the Bills just could not get the quarterback on the ground. So you go out and get a Von Miller, a proven finisher, who can be that exclamation point in a tough, contested game like in Kansas City last year. And even if Von Miller is not bringing Patrick Mahomes down four or five times a game, he can only sack him one time. But just because the offensive line is going to be paying so much attention to Von Miller, he can lead to an additional three or four sacks from his teammates. That's the kind of production. That's that's the kind of uh, that's what you can expect from a guy like Von Miller. And I'm glad you prefaced it by saying, "Yo, he may not have a ton of sacks." You see, because his impact is going to be felt far beyond just the statistical uh, portion of it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're only looking at the sack numbers to to uh, quantify his his production this year, you you may be disappointed. That and that's not to say he's not going to. You know, have a good a good sack here. We 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 just don't know, but but his his presence on the field on the team and what he does for other guys, like you mentioned, is where I think uh, uh, is really going to be felt. And we, we, this is something that we're really going to be able to see um, going into this year. And I, I and I can't wait for it, man. I'm excited about it. Yo, Kev, um, you've got something. You you, you got to dip out here real real quickly, don't you? I'm good for a bit. You good for a bit? Okay, okay, cool. So, so, so stick with us. Yeah, we've got a, we've got another guest that's coming up here here shortly. We're gonna bring him on here. He's been sitting here waiting patiently in the green room. In the green room, we're gonna bring him on here. But yo, as we move on into the show, I wanted to ask this question. Well, this this is kind of what we're gonna get into, man. Because going back, circling back to to training camp, you know, there have been some players, man, in training camp that have shown up 
and there's been some players in training camp that haven't shown up, right? And so this is what I want to talk about right now, man. I want to, I want to, I want to go around the horn, so to speak, and I want us to discuss some Bills camp show ups, some guys who have shown up in camp right now, so far, so far in camp. Um, and we're going to start from the top, man. I'm, I'm going to go with my man Ev, and then we're going to go down to Zach, and then followed up by by Kevin, and then I'll, 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 I'll go last. So Evan, man, so you you've actually you know had had eyes on the ground, man. You know you've had a chance to go to camp. Who are some guys, or maybe just just pick one guy, pick one guy, and you better not pick my guy either. Don't you even think about picking my guy. Who did you pick uh, uh, for your Bills camp show ups, man? Who who has shown up in camp for you so far this year? My biggest show up um, as of yesterday, who really opened up my eyes more and more. This is a rookie. I don't know if this is your guy, Rev. Okay. He is a rookie. No, you're good. No, you're good. Go ahead. All right. You're good. All right. Yeah. My guy's a rookie wide receiver, Khalil Shakir, who the last two times <laughs> in camp Somebody's that I've there. attended for has just made a big play yeah. after big play. Whether that was the Josh Allen back foot throw uh, on Thursday's camp, Khalil Shakir made a great grab. Khalil Shakir also made another outstanding grab. Uh, I forgot who he was covering him, but it was on the second team as Case Keenum threw a beautiful back shoulder throw into the corner of the end zone. And Khalil Shakir just came down with it once again. Also, Khalil Shakir is dominating overall. Um, he had a few nice grabs as well. Uh, a great crossing route, just working underneath. He's showing full display, playing inside and outside. Um, I think he's going to have a big impact on this roster. In my opinion, right now, he's the receiver four on this team. And yeah. I'm not saying, and I know Isaiah McKenzie has been outstanding, but I'm not gonna not gonna shy away from it. That Khalil Shakir is a guy that could push Isaiah McKenzie, and you know they could fight as that one A and one B slot mm. receiver uh, this season, just because I believe he is that good. But Khalil Shakir has shown outstanding presence as an outside receiver too, which I knew he could do that, but I didn't think he was gonna do it to the level that he's been doing it thus far. Man, that's incredible, man. I look. Um, Khalil Shakir, man, he's he, he's been and he's been very consistent throughout the entire camp too, man. Which is which you don't really see so much out of out of rookies, and and it's really this. I mean, the entire rookie class has been doing very well. Yeah, yo, yo. So Khalil Shakir, I'm excited about his future, man. I, I kind of want to. Uh, it's hard for me. It's hard for me, you know, not to think of him as like a, a Robert Woods guy. And I've said it before, man. But it's it may, maybe it's because he's wearing number ten. I don't know. And I've loved Robert Woods, and I hated when he left. But 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 this guy, man, he's 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 doing some things on the field. And then you know there was a clip, and Ev, I, I don't know if I don't know if it was you who showed it, or maybe it was just on, it was just it was just circulating uh, through Bill's Twitter uh, yesterday about about the touchdown that uh, that that Killer Shakir had in the scrimmage game, man. Like the guy who 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 was who was guarding him was that was that Dane Jackson? I can't re I can't remember. No, who it was. so in the scrimmage, I don't yeah. believe it was Dane Jackson. Uh, it could have been, I think it was 29. So that could have been Tim Harris jr. Okay. I believe, I believe, okay. I believe that's who it was. It was 29 Tim Harris jr. It was good coverage, yeah. really good coverage. Actually. Um, it's just Tim Harris jr. Just never got uh, his head around in time to, yeah. you know, to flex that pass. But yeah, Case Keenum just basically threw it up on, you know, the backside of Shakir and he just turned around and just kind of caught it, like dropping it in a bucket. Khalil Shakir just, has made great outstanding catches throughout camp thus far. And he's just showing that, you know, as a fifth round pick, he could have been drafted a lot higher. He's a receiver that looks to be NFL ready, according mm -hmm. to, you know, the way he's been playing uh, in camp. And he's just been one of the players, uh, you know, as I've been in person for camp watching these guys play, I'm just like, wow, like, you know, he really is a living up, you know, to the hype that Bills fans and Bills reporters have been giving him. Yeah. And I forgot who it was, but it might have been like Mitch Morse or something. It was it was one of the linemen talking about Khalil Shakir. Like he's just ready. Like he is he's ready. just ready. Yeah. yeah he is yeah. just ready to take a step that most rookies don't take. And I know guys like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase have been outstanding, like elite top five receivers in this league. Right. You know, going into their rookie years. But I'm not saying he's going to be like that, but like Khalil Shakir might have a very good 600, 700 yard season. Maybe mm. like kind of like Gabe Davis's rookie year. He's gonna be good, man. Man, I, uh, I know what you got. 
I believe it, man. And, and, and those other guys that you mentioned, I mean, those are first round draft picks. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so to get that type of value out of out of a guy who was drafted in round five, I think it was, it was round five. Yeah. That's, that's gonna be that's gonna be ridiculous, man. Um, and so I love I love that pick. I love I love Kalu Shakir, what I've seen out of him so far. And so now I'm I'm gonna go down here to Zach. Zach, you've had plenty of time now, man. So you so you've got, you've got <laughs> Zach is mad. He's he's mad at because you stole his thunder, man. You stole you stole his thunder. So Zach, uh, who 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 have who's your pick, man, for uh for Bills Camp show ups, man? Who's showing up to you? Well, I'm gonna say because. Because Evan stole my guy, but <laughs> I guess I got to go with the obvious. I don't know if I'm going to be stealing Kevin's or our next guest possible options, but Isaiah McKenzie. It's very yeah. obvious. He is like, <laughs> like, he's torn it up so far. He just came out of the gate running as fast as we know he can go, and he is in the driver's seat right now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, <laughs> he's in the driver's seat for the slot receiver role. Like Evan said, Khalil Shakir could also possibly push for it. I think he'll just end up being the wide receiver for initially to start out. But also the fact that they have the they are so loaded with quality depth that Jamison Crowder could be relegated to your wide receiver five, and you could still have that prolific o- offense with Josh Allen and the threat of a running game with another player that may end up being mentioned in this segment. I think that it just goes to show how much better this team is now compared to where they were to end last year. Dude, this is, this is ridiculous, man. Like, like when you think about the weapons, man, and and I saw, I saw Kevin's face (laughs) when you, when you chose, when you chose, when you chose, when you chose a man, Kevin's like, Oh, Crap! So now he's like, he's, I can see his brain is just, is just going on fire. He's trying, he's trying to figure out somebody else he can pick. And you better not, Kev. I already picked my guy, so don't you even think about stealing him, man. I already, I, I put it in the chat. So, so, so go look at it and see who I'm picking. So you, so you better pick somebody else. But anyway, man, getting back to Zach. So, dude, <laughs> yeah, Isaiah McKenzie, man, he's he has shown that that uh, that uh, the the I guess the role, I guess. Um, of, of the starting slot receiver, um, now that since Beasley is gone, was not too big for him. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know a lot of people probably was thinking like, yo, man, is are, are, these, are these shoes gonna be big to fill, right? And, and rightfully so, because Beasley was very good for us. Very good for us. Um, and I mean I mean last year, I mean over eight hundred yards receiving, man. And, and so when you when you when you have a guy like Beasley leaving, that's a big void, right? And so now when you look at at at, at a little dirty, you know what I'm saying, and he comes in I'm not too sure how many people were really expecting him to take on this type of a role, but he, since camp started, man, he just came in with a ball of fire and has just been showing all the way up, man, showing all the way up. He's been breaking guys' angles left and right. Dan Jackson's been getting burnt. Taron Johnson's been getting burnt. They all have been getting burnt by a little dirty, man. And I love what he brings because I think he brings a little el- different element to the game than what Beasley did, which of course is going to be that yak, but he also has that speed. He can run different, different routes. You see him getting deeper in his route and his route tree. So I, I love the potential. Some people I've, I've, I've seen, I don't know if you guys have seen it either, but I've seen some people talking about, yo, yo man, a little dirty could be our, our Tyreek Hill. I'm just going to pause a little bit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Tyreek Hill is elite. Uh, I'm not willing to, to put a little dirty on that type of pedestal just yet, but, but the skill set wise, when you look at, at what he offers, what he brings, it's very, very tantalizing and very intriguing, to say the least. So, man, Zach, uh, excellent pick. I love what McKenzie has been bringing to the squad. Uh, oh, man, man, dude, we got a troll, bro. <laughs> it's too early for trolls, man. It's too early for trolls. Troy, I don't know I don't know where you're watching from, man. I, I don't know what's up, but Bill's Mafia won't make it to the playoffs this year. I, I, you, you're tripping, dude. Uh, I don't know what you're smoking. Maybe you're down. Maybe you're a Miami fan who's been smoking a whole lot of that that that, that synthetic they, they, they got some crazy stuff going on down there in Miami. I don't know where you're coming from, but if you think that the Bills Mafia is not going to make the playoffs this year, you've got another thing coming. Anyway, so, Kev, you've had plenty of time now to try to, you know what I'm saying, try to try to, try to try to correct some wrongs, to try to pick your guy. So are you ready? Do you have a guy that you, that you believe has been a, a training camp show up this year? Yes, I, I have a few. So there's one okay. on offense. Only, only one. We're only, you only get one, Kev. You only got you got to pick one. 
can't no, steal reps. No, no. Oh, offensive defense. You, you go with it. I, I was having an offensive one, but – Okay. In go case defense, scared, I don't, I don't, want, you, go, I don't want you to take my guy, man. And I'm, I got a feeling you get it close. Which is why I said <laughs> I have a few. So I'm going to go over the defense. There we go. All totally right. underrated here, Terrell Bernard. There you go. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because – I was all over this guy when we were doing our draft coverage, and I haven't been to training camp. But what I've heard is that Terrell Bernard is very instinctual, and he's very smart. He's already starting to call the plays, and I guess he's been lining up behind Edmonds as a middle linebacker. Um, Sal Capaccio said that, as of now, Bernard is a backup middle linebacker, and Terrell Dodson is the backup weak side linebacker. Uh So take that for what it's worth. Usually it's the other way around. Um, But – Either way, it looks like those are the four linebackers this year, where it's Edmonds and Milano, and then Bernard and Dodson right behind them. And then maybe Tyler Maddikevich. I mean, I, I would think they would keep him because they love him for special teams. But in terms of the linebackers who are probably going to be playing on the field, it's those four guys. But Terrell Bernard, from everything that I've heard so far, he's been showing up a lot. That's what's up, man. Like, like yeah, Terrell Bernard, man. Um, and, and Evan, you had even mentioned Terrell Bernard um, before quite a bit. Um, I think you guys have got a bromance on my man Terrell Bernard coming out of out of, out of Baylor. He's been showing up, man. He's he's really been showing up. Um, I I didn't know that he was taking second team reps behind Tremaine Edmonds. You you we can't leave that that meat on that bone, man. Because you said take it for what it's worth. I think a lot of people are going to take it and run with it, man. What does what does that mean? He's getting second team reps behind Edmonds. Is it a possibility that the Bills front office is 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 looking? Beyond Edmonds this year, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm jumping the gun because you said that. Um, I don't know, but 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 uh, Bernard, man, um, tell me about about his skill set, man, and what you guys have been able to witness out of him so far in training camp. Well, the thing with the Bills is, oh, sorry, I haven't been in training camp, <laughs> so I'll let you guys talk. But the thing that I want to say real quick is the reason I said take it for what it's worth because you think, oh, he's back up middle linebacker, he's coming for Tremaine. Well, I think the Bills also love that versatility, and they want yeah. their linebackers to be able to play every position. So I think this is a time that you do it. You try to get his feet wet a little bit. Say, hey, play some weak side linebacker. Play some middle linebacker. Play some special teams. We want to see what you can do. So until he starts lining up there in a game, I just want to hold the brakes on, uh-oh, we have Edmonds' replacement. I agree yeah. with you, man. I agree with you. Go ahead, Ed. Go ahead. Go ahead, Evan. Yeah, my opinion on Terrell Bernard has like about him being the backup to Tremaine Edmonds as the middle linebacker is that I don't think he's actually the true definite backup as a middle linebacker. I think it's just more so that um, um, Terrell Dotson has kind of I wouldn't say beat out Terrell Bernard for that for that weak side spot because during eleven on eleven scrimmage yesterday, first team reps they were running more big nickel, but with Tremaine Edmonds in the middle linebacker spot, and then uh, Dotson and Milano, you know, as the weak side and outside linebackers. Um, so that was that there. Uh, Terrell Bernard was getting second team reps, but I think it's just more to say that as of right now, um, like you mentioned, Terrell Dotson is the backup uh, to Milano, and then that more that um, Terrell Bernard is the backup to Tremaine Edmonds. I think, in my opinion, if they actually had to go with the true definite backup, I think Medikavich would be a backup. Um, mm-hmm. behind Tremaine Edmonds more so than uh, Terrell Bernard, just because Terrell Bernard, in my opinion, is a little too small to play the middle linebacker role that the Buffalo Bills have in store. Uh, I mean, because they're complete two opposite players. Tremaine Edmonds is six foot five, and Terrell Bernard's six foot one, and he's he's smaller than Matt Milano. So it'd be interesting to see if they kept uh, Bernard as a middle linebacker, but I don't think it's like anything to push Edmonds out of the way or they're going to keep Bernard over Edmonds to make him the solidified middle linebacker for the future. So yeah, I want to get too carried away with it. Yeah, I see what you're saying, man. Like, first of all, like it's it's kind of hard to to even like compare, you know, the two because I mean, first of all, I mean, Edmonds is is a freak of nature. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like when you look at when you look at at, at kind of the uh, the middle linebackers of today's NFL, right? They're, they're smaller linebackers, right? I mean, they're they're six two, six three, maybe, and they're about a buck and a quarter. I mean, two two and a quarter, right? They're not they're not really big, but Tremaine Edmonds is like a throwback. He's like a freaking uh, uh what's my man uh, Brian? He's like a Brian Erlacher playing in, in, in this year's uh, 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 NFL, like like six five, two fifty with freaking wingspan, you know, like a pterodactyl. I mean, like, like that guy is, you just don't, you, when you, if you were to line up all the middle linebackers in the National Football League right now, 
and put Jermaine Edmonds in there. He's to me, I think he's going to be like head and shoulders above everybody else. He's just a freak of nature. Um, and so, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that uh, that Bernard is is going to come for him. I don't know, man. Uh, maybe he makes him expendable. I, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll. we'll, we'll yeah, we yeah, we'll we'll see what happens, man. Uh, throughout the throughout the year, I'm sure he'll get his opportunity to kind of play a little bit here and there. I do love the I do love the the uh, the idea of him in the big nickel. That's what really intrigues me about Bernard being being able to play that that big Buffalo nickel like like we've heard of so far. Uh, I mean, for so long because I remember a couple of years ago when uh, guys like Kyle Duggar came out. That was a guy that I was looking forward to drafting. We all know he he went to the Patriots, but having that guy, that bigger nickel guy, um, to play, I think. Um, it is, is tremendous in this defense. And Evan, you had even brought it up before about like whenever we face these these heavy run teams, these big physical running teams like like Tennessee Titans here in week two. Like I, I don't know who you want, you know, as as your nickel corner. Like like do you do you want to go with Taron Johnson or do you want to go big heavy package and bring in Terrell Bernard, you know, to be that yeah. to play that, that that heavy nickel position, man. So yeah, I, I love I love the idea of Bernard and what he brings so far. And uh, Leslie Frazier has has had some glowing remarks of him as well. So now, my let's get to my my show ups. I'm glad none of you guys picked my guy because I was going to be super heated because I didn't have another I didn't have a number two. You know what I'm saying? So 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 my guy, uh, man, this year has really been freaking. He's just been killing it, man. He he has been killing it, and uh, there's there's no better way for me to even introduce him than to actually show him to you right now. So this is what you guys are gonna do, man. You're gonna, you're gonna get a little piece of my man right here. And here he is right here. Take a look at this. Oh, come on now. Come on now. You got You see that guy. You see them down here, bottom of the screen. Oh man, my man, my man, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis is a guy that I have been watching uh, since the beginning of this off season. I've been following him religiously um, on, on, on the gram and everywhere else, man. And this dude has been putting in the work this off season and we can see it physically. The guy gained a lot of weight, added about what, about 10, 15 pounds. Like he, he's like 17. 17 pounds to his frame. He was he already came in like 210. So now the dude is with Wayne almost 230, right? Close, close to that that range. And he has not lost a step. He has not lost a step. So now he's just physically imposing. Just physically imposing, just destroying our, our poor little DB DBs, man, which is kind of sad to see, but it's good to see from him. Um, this guy, man, is everything. And I put an all my mama take before. That I thought that I believe that all my mama Gabe Davis is going to be, uh, he's he's going to have a thousand yard uh, receiving season in addition to uh, my man uh, Stephon Diggs. I think both of those guys are going to have phenomenal years, and and, and we're going to get those guys worth a thousand yards receiving each. But Gabe Davis is going to have an extraordinary jump this year um, by being that 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 number two wide receiver option for Josh Allen. He's going to get a lot more targets, which means he's going to get a lot more yards. He is average over the past couple of years, I think over 16 yards per reception. The guy is a sneaky good deep threat. You see him right now. You saw the clip right there. He has the ability to kind of separate at the last minute, man, from DBs. And he has hands like freaking, I don't know, man. Like he's got to stick them in his hands or something. The dude, the dude catches just about everything. So Gabe Davis has been putting on an absolute clinic and, 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 and training camp. And I can't wait for him to explode this regular season. So those are your training camp show ups. But now we've got to go a little bit further, man, because we can't go from one end of the spectrum without going to the other end of the spectrum. So now we're going to talk about some guys who have not shown up to camp, some Bills camp no shows, some Bills camp no shows. And we're going to go back around the horn. Um, Evan, who do you have as your Bills camp no show who's been a complete blank so far? Yeah, uh, I'm just going to kind of stick with my original answer that I had on one of the previous shows. I don't remember if it was uh, your show on Wednesday or if it was like that little get together that we had. It was me, Rico, Zach, and then you on the grill. Yeah, I um, remember. I think it was my show. Thursday. Uh, it was OJ Howard. 
and I'm going to stick with this. Uh, OJ Howard has just been disappointing in my opinion. And I get it. He hasn't seen the targets that he might've wanted to see thus far, you know, cause he is lining up in uh 12, 13 and 22 personnel packages. And sometimes he's more on the line than others. And he isn't getting out in the receiving game, but I, I just haven't seen that, that big play or just any real, real play from OJ Howard. I've went to three camps in person thus far and they've been the last three camps the Buffalo Bills have had. And O.J. Howard has just not made any plays. I think I have seen him catch one pass throughout training camp. And it's not like I haven't been watching the tight ends work uh, against, you know, the defensive backs or just strictly, you know, 11 on 11s or 7 on 7s. I, you know, I've seen them, you know, go against each other. It's just O.J. Howard has just kind of been a player that who's taken first team reps but has been completely invisible. Uh, even when you look at guys on the offensive line, like Bobby Hart, Cody Ford, when they have been plugging in on the first team, they're noticeable uh, because, you know, they have been out outstanding compared to what their set standards were. But a guy like O.J. Howard, you know, you bring this guy in on a one-year contract worth up to $5 million. You think, okay, that isn't the, the biggest contract in the world, but it's still pretty sizable enough to where you want to get production out of your tight end, too. It's just O.J. Howard has just not made that play out. And I know I keep kind of going over that it's just i just want to see that happen but it just has not happened he's been a pretty disappointing player in my opinion yeah and that's that's kind of unfortunate man and like you said hopefully hopefully it's just because of the packages that they've been rolling out so far man maybe they don't want to you know put too much out there you know for other people to watch you know what i'm saying uh, because you know the, you know us fan size and we have a tendency to put vids out there you know what i'm saying and 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 let everybody see some of the behind the scenes work from the buffalo bills so maybe you know, maybe maybe that's the reason, man. Maybe maybe we just haven't seen it rolled out because it's 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 you know being done on purpose. Um, I, I you know it would it would shock me to think that man, a guy like OJ Howard in this offense, man, would not show up. You know, because it's just it's just it's just too much potential there, too much potential there, man. But I I get it, man, because he's been quiet. I haven't heard absolutely anything um, about OJ Howard, man, and what he's been doing so far in training camp. Let's hope that, 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 that those things change, um, the closer we get into the regular season, maybe we'll start to see him more in the preseason. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, because there, I mean, there's a lot of mouths to feed. There's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense. Um, but I love that. I love, I love that take Evan. So Zach, your turn, man, who has not shown up, man, who is a bills camp? No show. I'm going to say this player, I'm going to say Jamison Crowder, but the caveat here is it's not even his fault. He yeah. got injured, so he's been – hasn't had a chance to practice, like, beyond the first day. But what he did show was very promising, like everyone expected, and obviously we know what he can do. Having faced him twice a year for the past three or so years, we know what Crowder can do on the field. So him being a no-show – as it is again yeah. because he was injured not his fault it doesn't really mean that much we know what he can do on the field so and i'm i'm very encouraged by him yeah regardless. same same yeah same i mean it's, it's just unfortunate i mean i mean you know what they say you know the best ability is availability you know and he just wasn't he just hasn't been available he has not been available this year and so it, it's it's paved the way to guys like like isaiah mckenzie and and Khalil Shakir to really kind of steal the shine from Crowder, who 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 has had the more productive um, career in the slot, which is a reason why Brandon Bean brought him onto the squad. And so um, we'll see what happens in training camp, man, as training camp progresses and, and as he gets kind of more, um, as he gets healthier um, in camp, maybe he starts to show up a little bit more as we approach the regular season. Kev, who do you have, man, on your list, man, for your training camp? No show. Well, Zach kind of took mine. I was going to say Crowder too. <laughs> so. Zach is taking everybody, man. He got, he got you twice. <clears throat> if it's okay, I'll just kind of expand on that Crowder point. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, obviously, like Zach was saying, Crowder hasn't really been practicing that much. H how many times exactly has he practiced, and how many days has he missed? Do we know specifically? Um, at points, I'll, I'll kind of step up on this really quick. Uh, at points and times, I believe he missed – Four out of five days. I want to say he's on his third day practicing. Could be fourth, but I'm pretty sure it's third. I'm pretty sure he's on his third day fully practicing because I think one day he came in, he was just kind of light. He was working his way back into things. And then I think the last three days um, from Tuesday's camp to Thursday's camp to yesterday's scrimmage, he has been uh, 
practicing in 11 on 11 team drills. So he's a full participant now? He's not just doing stuff on the side? Yeah, no, no. So, yeah, the last three days at camp, respectfully, I remember he has been uh, participating in team drills. Okay, so that's good. So, I mean, that makes it better. Um, but just to expand on that point, the more time that Crowder was missing, the more action that McKenzie was getting. And all we've been hearing from McKenzie is that he's been making plays. He's making plays, as Josh Allen said, he's a little muscle hamster. And everyone seems to be loving Isaiah McKenzie right now, and rightfully so. Um, but the reason I wanted to bring this up is because even if Crowder does come back, I'm very intrigued. I mean, he already is back. But yeah. if he makes a 53-man roster, which I think he will, the Bills signed him for a reason, for that speed, the yak, uh, kind of Allen security blanket, I'm curious to see how they orchestrate that slot receiver room and how they're going to divvy up the snaps between McKenzie and Crowder. And then even guys like Khalil Shakir, maybe Marcus Stevenson, if he makes it Tavon Austin, like we talked about last week. So it's just a very interesting predicament that the Bills have. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it, it just makes it that much more interesting when McKenzie is getting a lot more time than Crowder. So hopefully for Crowder's sake, he can just stay healthy and they can just kind of battle it out. But again, it's a good problem to have. I actually yeah, want to say yeah. one more thing about the Crowder thing. Go ahead. I think I think they might honestly take Khalil Shakir and make him almost a full time outside receiver, and they might mm. keep mm. Crowder alongside with McKenzie as the starting slot, and then a guy like Marcus Stevenson, who is a, basically a pure outside, and then Tavon Austin, who's been playing a lot of outside. Um, you, when you when you dwindle it down, your slot really comes to guys like. Stefan Diggs, when you move him around, Jamison Crowder, Isaiah McKenzie, and believe it or not, Isaiah Hodgins has been playing in the yeah. slot a little bit yeah. too. Right. So that's that's something to to kind of throw in the mix there too. Now, I don't know if this changed, but when I went to the Bills draft party, uh, Brandon Bean's town hall, he said that they view Shakir as a wide receiver four, meaning that basically like the one and the two would be Diggs and Davis, obviously. Wide receiver three is a slot. And then wide receiver four is that first backup to come in off the bench to either play on the inside or the outside. Mm. So, again, I don't know if that's changed since the end of April, but the way Bean said it is they want him to come in off the bench and play any position. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he has a, he has that flexibility. So so that, that's good. Um, um, you know, Khalil Shakir can play inside and outside. So um, I'm actually very comfortable with him as, at, at the four. Um, and, and we'll just we'll just see we'll just see what happens, man. So I, I, at the end of the day, Josh Allen has has weapons galore, man. When you look at when you look at Diggs and Davis, and then and then you've got guys like McKenzie and Crowder, you know, and hopefully he he, he can get back healthy and, and 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 actually produce in this offense. And then you have a guy like like Khalil Shakir. Plus I, we got Isaiah Hodgins and then Jake Kumaro, you know, and run blocking situ situations. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. But but I don't I don't I don't think Josh Allen is going to run out of out of weapons. Um, not, not, not one bit. So now as we keep it moving, um, whose turn is it, man? Is it, is it my turn? It's yours. It's my, okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So now we're still talking, we're still talking about these training camp, no shows. And, uh, there, there's one guy, man, that I just have not seen. I have not heard about, um, at all. And that's, that's, that's Shaq Lawson. <laughs> that's Shaq Lawson. That was, yeah. that was, that was my guy to begin with Zach. So, so don't even think I'm, I'm stealing it from the chat. But no, man, I'm glad none of you, none of you mentioned it. I'm like surprised that you guys didn't, didn't mention his name. But Shaq Lawson, I don't know what's happening. Like I have heard zip zero nada out of Shaq Lawson this entire training camp, and uh, he's a guy that you know. And when when we bring when we brought him back, it's like okay, okay, familiar face on the defensive line. The guy is very good as a run or as a as a, as a run stopping defensive man. Um, a guy who can set the edge because we know that's what he excelled in uh, when he was with the Bills. His first stint, his first go around. But man, this this camp, and I had I had, I think I think I had even put this all, as I think this was an on my mama take a long time ago, man. I didn't I didn't think that that he was gonna make the, make the roster. Um, when you look at the additions across the defensive line, I, I I thought that Jack Lawson was gonna have an uphill battle to climb, um, and it looks like it, man. He has been quiet. He's been quiet now. Now maybe there's not reporting on. Him. I don't know. I don't know. Evan, did you see anything out of him in, in, in camp um. when you went there? The only thing that I really saw from Shaq Lawson was one time he did get into the backfield. I don't know if they counted it as a sack for himself, 
Uh, but that was on. I want to say I want to say Tuesday's camp. Uh, he got into the backfield and he, he made a play. Uh, but other than that, I haven't seen too much from Shaq Lawson. To be honest, it's just kind of hard to like pick apart the defensive line. It has to be kind of like a big game wrecking play uh, to really notice. Just because again, when you got a guy like Josh Allen back there, he just makes the defensive linemen look invisible, look like they're not even back there. It's just kind of he's like yeah. moving around cones, cones sometimes. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. just kind of what I've seen from Shaq. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I, I don't know, man. I kind of, I don't know. I don't even know what I was expecting to, to get from Shaq. I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's, I guess that veteran presence, you know what I'm saying? And, and maybe you just kind of want a guy there who knows the system and who's, who, who's capable, right? Um, especially when it comes to stopping the run the most, I mean, because that, that's been the weakness of the defensive line for a very long time. And so um, maybe at best, I thought that he would just be a rotational guy who could do that. But as we started adding more and more guys to the, to the, to the roster, man, on, on the defensive line, I was like, man, I don't see how, how Shaq is even going to make the 53. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. We will see. But, yo, guys, so that's that's all we have, man, as far as our, our training camp show-ups and training camp no-shows. Do me this favor, man. To everybody who's still rocking with us, we appreciate you. But do me this favor. Go ahead and, and, and smash that like button. Smash that like button and click the subscribe button as well with the notifications on so that way you don't miss anything uh buffalo bills related so we're going to keep it moving in the show uh my man uh kev any 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 uh any, any closing remarks man before you head out of here well not to get too far off topic but in my last article that i did about the defensive ends i came across as one crazy stat mm -hmm. and it was for aaron donald so if you go over to my article, you will also see the defensive tackles that we didn't talk about here. We talked about the pass rushers, so you have right. to go look at that. But when I got to Aaron Donald, I was like, okay, these, this guy has all the stats. He has all the accolades. What's something that I can pull out that maybe not a lot of people will know? And I looked into it, and I was like, let's see where he was drafted and who was drafted ahead of him. So do you guys know? Zach knows because he looked at the article. And I don't know, maybe if you guys did too. Um, but if you didn't read – the article totally, you know, front to back yet. Do you guys know who was drafted ahead of Aaron Donald in 2014? I, I, I can, I can, I can guess it. Okay. Jadavion Clowney. Yeah. Well, just some totally obscure players that I'm talking about. I mean, he was drafted what 13th or 14th. So that there could be a few guys, but some real guys, it's some real interesting Okay, I'm I'm looking. Players here. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, I see. It's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty ridiculous when you look at the list. When you look at those guys who 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 were drafted ahead of Donald, man. But yeah, go ahead. And one one in particular that that played for the Bills. So obviously we have Sammy Watkins. Mm -hmm. There was Greg Robinson, the tackle. Yeah. Uh, Blake Bortles. Yeah. Gosh. Drafted third overall. Blake Bortles. Awful. Justin Gilbert, the cornerback by the Browns, and then Eric Ebron. What? <laughs> that's nuts, man. That, that's, that's, that was crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's nuts. And, and, and Aaron Donald, man, is, is a feature first ballot in the Hall of Famer without a question, without question. So, yeah, I mean, you, you guys have to go check the rest of that article out because, as, as, as Kev mentioned, we didn't, we didn't even touch the defensive tackles because we wanted to leave that for you guys to go ahead and check out and read it, man. He's got a lot of very, very interesting defensive tackles here on his top 10 list that you guys have to check out on the buffalofanatics.com or download the BF network app. So we're going to keep moving because I've got my man here that I'm going to bring on to the show here as, as we as we make a make a smooth transition um, into some things that we haven't really um, been talking about uh, for a while. But I kind of felt like, you know, we wanted to just kind of have a little bit of fun with this. Um, and uh, before before I before I do that, does anybody have to Kev, you got you got you got a bounce, right? You and Abby. I got, about one o'clock. Yeah, I got a bounce, okay. too. All right. All right, so uh, Ev, any, any last last remarks, man? Before before we uh, before I let you go. Uh yeah, I mean, just just overall for the whole training camp aspect of things. Anyone listening, uh, if you want more of an in depth breakdown, I think I mentioned earlier in the show, go follow the BF Twitter. There's a nice little timeline down there. It's not too far gone yet. Uh, you know, if you know whoever's on the Twitter today is you know busting out content, you know, with the article team, just updates, graphics, whatever. But it is still uh, a day fresh. So go check that out. Um, you know, I put a lot of work into that. I just made a small little recap video. Uh, there's a few uh, videos as well up there from the actual training camp. Uh, Rev showed one of Gabe Davis scoring that touchdown. Might might be one of James Cook. 
Uh, but, you know, there's some also just good in-depth information as well, uh, just leading for some of the touchdown scores, who was hot, who was not. Um, but, yeah, that's just kind of it. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Ev, Ev has been rocking it, man. He's been killing it, putting out the content. Ev, we appreciate you so very much, man. Make sure you guys go ahead and give my man Ev a follow at Evan H716. And that's the man right there. Ev, talk to you later, man. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, right. brother. See you guys. Yo, so, man, guys, Buffalo Fanatics, man, have been putting out a, a whole lot of content here here recently man that's what we do and as as tr as training camp moves around and and now we're entering into preseason there's gonna be a whole lot more to talk about and a whole lot more content to talk about and you don't want to miss anything any of it so make sure you download the bf network app so that way you can have it all at your fingertips all right at your fingertips but now my man and zach you know what zach, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you do the honors man of introducing our very next guest who uh, uh, he was supposed to show up, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but you know, due to some unforeseen circumstances, he wasn't able to show up, you know. And I had, and I kind of completely whiffed on on all of his hard work, man. He had made a video and everything like that, and it just, I just couldn't play it. So I'm gonna give him an opportunity right now, just kind of, you know, help make some things up. And uh, my man here is coming on right now. So Zach, go ahead and do us a favor and, and introduce our next guest to the show. He is a BF man, myth, legend, Yeston Harris our local historian and all around just an awesome dude. And he deserves all the praise that we could give him. He's an excellent writer, gives excellent breakdowns. His history show episode. Um, what are these things called? Articles <laughs> are always something to behold, both in content and in length. And that is all that is all OK. So I'll just let him hop in because he deserves all the praise we can give him. Yo, my man, yes, and what is good, man? What's good, what's good, what's good? Good to see you, and, and uh, hey, this is my first time meeting you, man, you know what I'm saying? We we chop it up here on, on, in, the, in the BF chat, but this is the first time that I've ever had the chance to actually talk to you, um, you know, on screen, man. So welcome to the show, man, how you doing? I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I, uh, you know, been been in the green room for a little while watching you guys go over, uh, Go for all my favorite guys and oh uh, man, what? No, no, no. no, <laughs> no, no, no. I've, we'll, no we'll, I've, we'll give you a chance to. to I'm just, to, I'm, just to get, I'm just glad you live, glad you gave them some love. I I appreciate it. Yeah, there you go, man. It's because you know, I mean, you know, you're, you're a smart guy, man. You know what I'm saying? And so you, you kind of knew everything beforehand. Um, you, you know, um, but you have you, you have uh. You put out, man, some interesting articles, dude. And, and so, like, as as we shift, you know, from from kind of our, our training camp. To, oh, well, first of all, first of all, hold on. I don't, don't want to do that to you. I want to do that to you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to kind of make your peace, man, and say say whatever it is that you, that, that's on your mind, man. In, any guys in in, in training camp um, that you would put on your show up list, and then your no show list. I mean, my my show up list was uh, was absolutely going to be McKenzie. I had an article come out about him yesterday uh, about yeah. how I, I believe he's probably the starting slot receiver for us right now. Um, it's his job to lose. Admittedly, he he took advantage of all the extra snaps he's had with Jamison Crowder missing for uh, a vast majority of camp so far. And when we signed Jamison Crowder, I was absolutely thrilled. Uh, I think I I thought and still think he's going to be a phenomenal addition to this offense. Um, I envisioned him as being sort of an upgrade uh, on a uh, you know, slightly younger Cole Beasley with the way he works. And mm -hmm. uh, he's done so much more in his pre-Buffalo career than Cole Beasley did with significantly less help. Was Cole Beasley, I, I, you know, we can talk, talk all the crap we'd like about Tony Romo and Dak Prescott, but they're a severe upgrade over what Jameson Crowder had been working with on his whole career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, uh, I had an article about, about Crowder um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, talking about uh, the comparison of, of, of his effectiveness coming into this team compared to Cole Beasley's. Mm. Um, they actually had the exact same tenure with their previous teams under their belts. Um, similar sort of snap counts over their careers, but Crowder was always that guy on teams that didn't have a guy. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to have him on board. Um, but then once camp took off and he was sidelined for the entirety of the show, um, you know, Isaiah McKenzie did everything he was asked for with his snaps. Um, they they gave him all the opportunity, and he proved himself. And Khalil Shakir has had a phenomenal camp as well, but they couldn't justify taking McKenzie out of the ones to put Shakir in just because of how good McKenzie's been. 
Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's the first time in his career that he's really competing for a starting role, and he's earned it. If you remember, um, you know, Isaiah McKenzie was bottom of that wide receiver core that Josh Allen had back in 1819, you know, back when uh, we, we desperately, desperately needed help. This dude wasn't even cracking that roster. And yet here he is playing out of his mind with the ones four years, five years into his, his Buffalo Bills tenure. It's, it's, it's absurd. Um, obviously, I'm thrilled to see it. Um, you know, I think he, he did a phenomenal job in his lone starting slot performance for us, you know, that Patriots game in week 16. Yeah. But he, uh, he absolutely earned it. Um, you know, every, every, every rep he's got, he's, he's made the most of, and he's absolutely earned it. You just, I know you guys mentioned he'd been a little bit quiet, um, at the, uh, return of the blue and red, but he, uh, he doesn't need to show up right now. What he needs to show up is in preseason and, uh, we'll see Definitely. how they utilize him there, but I mean, Definitely. He, yeah, he's a career slot, you know. I mean, he took he's taken forty three percent of his snaps from the slot last year. Mm-hmm. That was behind Cole Beasley, um, who took the second most slot snaps in the entirety of the NFL. Um, so you know, he's, he's he 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 got his work in, and um, yeah, I expect him to excel. You know, all tons of crosses, running away from linebackers, and forcing yes. mismatches. Yes. So, so and some of the same some of the same uh, um, 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 concepts and routes that 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 Beasley ran, but he has the speed to actually run away from defenders. You exactly. Know what I'm so so that's that that's what's gonna elevate his game and really elevate the offense is that man. You like when he if you give him the ball in space, you know, and a lot of those crowds, those crossers, those underneath routes. I mean, he 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 has the ability to kind of take it to the distance, just like a Tyree Kill has has done before, because mm-hmm. he has that type of speed. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love I love what Isaiah McKenzie is bringing to the roster, and it makes absolute sense um, that you don't want to you know uh, take him off the field. I mean, you know what I'm saying for for a guy like Jamison Crowder who's been injured, and then even even a guy like Khalil Shakir when M- McKenzie has been showing up so so much in training camp. Now, now, what about what about somebody who who you think has not shown up so far in training camp? Um, I I would love to say Shaq Lawson. I mean, I yeah. you know yeah. I was excited when he came back, but then when we when I saw how much work we'd done on this defensive line, um, and it has been an obscene turnover. Yeah. Um, I don't see how he fits in. I mean, I think Me he's. Either. I think I, th- I think he can crack the roster. I think he's too good to sit on the practice squad. You know, he will go right. and play somewhere if he doesn't make this fifty three. But when you have such a deep, deep group, a surprisingly deep group, um, it's, you know, and you're choosing between keeping Shaq Lawson for a year or maybe, you know, someone a little younger, someone with two or three years left under contract, mm-hmm. you know, maybe a guy like AJ Epinesa. Yeah, who has I, was, apparently... I was just, yes, I mean, you're in my head, but I was just about to ask you that question. Like, if you had a chance, like, if it came down to it, like, like we're, we're, we're narrowing down the bottom end of the defensive line group and it came down to Shaq Lawson or AJ Epinesa, who, in my opinion, has not. I mean, maybe maybe he's flashed a little bit more than Shaq, mm. but you know, like who would you who would you pick if you I mean, had to I would get rid have of one? Pick Epinesa because we have a couple of major issues, and these are great problems to have. Um, but we have far too many talented players on this roster to to, to keep and maintain, and we're going to have to make we're going to have to make concessions in so in certain areas to be able to afford this right. championship contending team. I mean, right now we're already having, having issues in trying to you know, figure out how to extend Edmonds. If we can do that, mm-hmm. if we even want to, I do, but I know that's a controversial opinion. Um, you know, we're trying to keep, you know, how long are we going to keep Micah Hyde for? How, when he's going to, when is he going to need yeah. extending or replacing that's Jordan tough. Foyer is obviously in the middle of a contract or a bit of contract drama right now. Right. Um, and then and thing is outside of those guys, in a year's time, we're gonna have more issues, you know. And what about Ed Oliver? What about Dawson Knox? Plenty of talented nah, players man. are gonna to need to be paid. If it's gonna be know, tough, it, man. Yeah, you know, you gotta trim the fat where you can. You know, pinch your pennies and spend your pounds. Yeah. It's it, you, you got to do it the right way. Yeah, and absolutely. It, making these little these little fringe cuts to save a couple bucks here or there is the best way to maintain cap space for the guys who really, really make the big impact. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Is is there? What about what about what about the running backs, man? Anybody in the running back room um, that, that that you think have, um, have, have has has shown up? Mm, well, I'll start up? with a guy who did who hasn't shown up. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't I don't really see JD McKissick making this team, guys. I think he's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know he's gonna be on the Where, where's he been like like crack. this whole time? Where's he been? Like, yeah, I mean I I was so sure we signed him. I had an entire article written about him and published that day. It was, I was so yeah. excited, and then less than 24 hours later, you know, I'm getting I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of messages from everywhere I promoted that article. 
saying, hey, um, he's not signing with us. He's not signing with us. He's not coming back to the Bills. Um, sorry, this article isn't accurate. He's actually not signing with the Bills. And I'm like, yes, yes, I am acutely aware. I have been very well informed on the matter. Um, yeah, I was heartbroken because he was the dream, he was my dream receiving back. He was the, he was what I've been asking for for two years. You know, don't take right. the ball out of Josh's hands to get the run game going. Just get it to them differently. You know, let Josh be the middle man. If he's deciding to throw downfield, or if he's deciding to throw to a running back one yard downfield, make you know call that a run play and just mm-hmm. let Josh mm-hmm. pass it. Exactly. Um, but when we, we didn't get McKissick, I was I was okay with Duke Johnson. Mm-hmm. I would have been mm-hmm. perfectly fine rolling with Duke Johnson into 2022. And then we drafted James Cook, and I don't need Duke Johnson anymore. Right, because they're both the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I was excited for it. I think Duke Johnson's great, and he's, for sh- once again, just like Shaq Lawson, he's too good to not be on a roster getting snaps mm-hmm. this season. But I don't know if he makes this roster. You know, I mean, I think he's better than Zach Moss, but he doesn't, you know, the, the philosophy of this of Brandon Bean for you know in in the favor of both the offense and the defense is he wants toolsy guys so they can run versatile teams. That's why we brought in OJ Howard so we could run yeah. more uh, you know more more twelve personnel. Yes, and twenty two personnel. You know we we have something we couldn't do. We ran the league low twelve personnel last season, I believe. Yeah, we did. It's yeah. like eight, like like four or eight percent, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, this. The, the name of Brandon Bean's game is to give our offensive and defensive coordinators and Sean McDermott as many weapons to work with in any scenario so they can do literally anything. Anything. And completely keep, versatile. Yeah. yeah. Then, you know, it makes it impossible to game plan for. Them. Right. Um, 100%. So, you know, I'm, uh, that's, that's why I was so excited to get Drew Johnson. And that's why I was so happy that we got James Cook because he's essentially just a cheaper, long term Drew Johnson. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it gives us options, but it means we've got to cut Duke Johnson because... I'm okay with it. You know, because because Zach Moss gives us better pass blocking and he's a little, yeah. bit, little bit more of a bullback than anyone else we have on the mm-hmm. roster. Yep. Um, I, would so, ra- you know, I would rather give give those carries to, to, to Zach Moss, man, than mm-hmm. have Josh, you know, banging it, you know what I'm saying, and, and run the risk of getting hurt. Oh, exactly. Um, yeah, and yeah. then I think if we, you know, if, if it comes down to that running back room, obviously it's Singletary and James Cook. And then to me... I would bring Zach Moss, but I would leave him inactive on game days in favor of Reggie Gilliam, personally. Ooh, nice. I'm, you know, you know, I think that, I know that, somebody that, is 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 fuming, man, when when, when she watches the replay. Of this. <laughs> Trish well, is gonna, I, she's gonna be pissed. She, she I hears. mean, she might be, and she's, I mean, she's she's definitely allowed to be, but you know, it's yeah. it's it's tough to, to disagree. With, I love uh, Gilliam, man. I do. And, I, I love, I mean, I, when when the philosophy of this, this often and defense is to give our guys options he gives us options that uh most of the third or fourth running backs on the roster wouldn't so absolutely I'll take absolutely it. kev kev before you head out man what are you what are your thoughts man on the, on the running back room so far and what you've seen um and what you've heard out of out of training camp yeah it's tough because like you guys are saying cook made duke johnson expendable and with mm-hmm. zach moss he has a bigger purpose on this team than duke johnson does because of the fact that the bills have james cook now so I want to see James or yeah, I, I obviously want to see James Cook on the Bills. I want to see Duke Johnson on the Bills. And like Essen said, he definitely needs to be on an on an NFL roster. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if it's gonna be this roster just because yeah. of the depth that the Bills have. And then to be honest, I don't know how you guys feel about this. I don't mean to get sidetracked and start a whole new topic here, but yeah, how do you feel about Ty- go ahead? But just real quick, yeah. How do you feel about Taiwan Jones? Because to me, I don't want to undervalue special teams, and I know the Bills value that a lot, but it kind of seems like that's clogging up a roster spot when you have five running backs to choose from, and one of them is solely just for special teams. I know he's a captain, but can't you get someone else to run down on the field for kickoffs? Isn't it like the easiest coverage out there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, he's 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 been here this long for a reason because he's very good at at his, at his job, mm-hmm. and if I think if they could have just plugged in anybody. By now they would have done so, um, and so I, I think you also can't can't overstate or, or understate the importance of special teams and having that that core um, together as long as you possibly can, which is the reason why we've 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 kept you know a guy like Tyler Matikavich on on the roster is why we and he's a, he's solely you know special teams he does he gets absolutely no reps 
on the defensive side of the ball unless there's some unforeseen injuries, you know what I'm saying, that, that occur. Um, and the guys like Jay Kumaro, we've, we've carried on the roster for what, how long now? You know what I'm saying? Who gets no reps at wide receiver. Um, and so so I think I think the importance of, of having a guy like Taiwan Jones, man, can't be can be overstated. And 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 if it, if it comes down to, to him or some bottom guy you know on the roster like uh, i don't know man like isaiah hodgins maybe i would probably lean to just keeping the core special teams unit in place man over a guy like hodgins who may not even make the team in the beginning you know what i'm saying so that, that's 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 just my thoughts man anybody else got got any, any uh any agreements or disagreements with that all i'll say about this conversation about taiwan jones is death taxes taiwan jones on special teams like yeah. It's a yeah, he's there. Like, he's there. That's the reason he makes the roster every single year. He doesn't, and he could be in a pinch. He could be a receiving back, but with James Cook there now, you have Singletary too. You have Isaiah McKenzie. You have Crowder. You have so many weapons at the receiver and tight end position. You don't even need to rely on a depth receiving back. Right. I would say the one play that st- comes to mind, or two plays actually for Tywan Jones as a receiving back, were one, the first time he was in Buffalo against Tampa Bay when he had that reception that set up the game-winning field goal, and then the second one in OT of that Texans-Bills wildcard game where he had the big reception that set up the game-winning field goal for the Texans. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. saying he will do that, and he's not expected to do that because, like I right. said, Death taxes Taiwan Jones on special teams, mm-hmm. but he is like that emergency option. Mm-hmm. And clearly, the Bills brass like trust him enough. They, they trust him. They yeah. trust him. Yeah. They yeah. trust him on special teams. You want to have a solid special teams unit that you can trust to do their thing. So it helps out and enhances the offense and the defense as well. No yeah, doubt. I, I, and and, and, and let, me, let me shift real, real quick, uh, Yesen, uh, because I, w- I want to ask you this question, man. You, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So, so I mean, we're talking sure. about the running back position here. Um, is there anybody on the running back position on, on the roster right now that we have that that could be potentially, you know, and I, I, I don't know, man, that, that could be like the next Fred Jackson? Like, like who's the next Fred Jackson? Uh, on this roster, man, because you know, I, I know, I know you you love you some Fred Jackson. Matter of fact, I uh, do. You wrote I about do. Fred Jackson, baby. So yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll I did, I did. I did. I wrote about his whole route to the NFL because uh, you know he went he went undrafted out of Coke College in 03. Um yeah. and four mm-hmm. years later he stepped onto the uh, onto the field for the NFL. And most guys, if you go undrafted and you don't make it into the NFL your first year, that's it. That's it. You're done. Like the average the average career of an undrafted NFL player. Is I think about two weeks, uh, and it's yeah. it, you know because you know, and, that, and that's including outliers like guys who have seven, ten year careers. You know, most mm-hmm. of these guys never get signed to a roster, or they get signed and then two days later they're cut again, or you know they'll right. they'll come for camp and they'll help throw a ball as you know QB five, and then uh, you know never be heard from ever again. But um, Fred Jackson uh, didn't take that sitting down. You know, he didn't make he didn't make a practice squad. You know, he went he went to uh, the arena leagues for two years. You know, play for a hundred bucks a day, whilst uh, you know an extra fifty bucks if they won a game. You know, and got by on, he got by on his social worker, uh, his social worker degree. You know, he went, went to came back because uh, uh, Marv Levy um, was obviously a co college alum as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he, he he had that in, and uh, you know Marv Levy heard about him, insisted uh, that the Bills bring him in, came on to the practice squad. You know, wasn't going to make it, so they sent him to NFL Europe. Where he played for yeah. the Rhine Fire in yeah. Germany, and you know, he found his way back. I won't give you give it all away, but um, you know, like that sort yeah. of resilience is 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 necessary when you got a guy like that. And you know, he didn't shy away from contact. He didn't shy away from getting the ball in the passing game. You know, he returned kicks. He did everything he could to get out on that field. And um, I think that the mentality of the player is more important than the physical aspect. Yes, if you're yeah, looking for a yeah. guy like Fred Jackson, right, right, exactly. Yeah, and that, that's kind of what can, I'm leaning towards. The question, exactly. Yeah. We can, we can, we can, we if we, I think if we want to find a guy who's like Fred Jackson, you can't look at the traits. In my mind, the mm-hmm. closest thing to a Fred Jackson mm-hmm. we have on this roster right now is Singletary. Yeah, and that he'll take yeah. that ball to the house. He doesn't shy away from the contact, but he's still got good burst. You know, um, he's still able to. He works okay as a receiver. Um, I think that with a more effective screen game, mm. it would be a dead ringer. Um, there we go. Because Fred Jackson, that 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 screen game with that offensive line, oh. you know, Eric Wood out front, oh. you know, on those little those little those little screens, I I lived for those things. Me you know, too, it was, man. 
It was the only reason I ever won a game in Madden with that Bills team was screen, 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 yeah. screen, screen. They it was brilliant. Oh, um, yeah. It's 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 refreshing, and I think with Aaron Cromer back in as OL coach, we could genuinely see those the, the some more of that screen game action again with a guy like Singletary. If they're not, you know, because if you put James Cook out there, they're expecting a pass to a running back. Um, but I I would put Singletary in that role again this year and see what happens. You know, gave him the it. opportunity to produce because no no we don't have a running back better on this team with the ball in their hands and the responsibility on their shoulders. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely love it. So, so when you so when you think about a guy like Fred Jackson and what he's brought to the team um, when he when he was playing, um, is he is is he a Bills Wall of Famer? I mean, he should absolutely be. If you're okay. looking at right, I've got three guys who are drought guys. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. So let's so let's so let's talk about let's, let's talk about some Bills Wall of Fame candidates. Here here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Um. So. I've got three drought guys um, who, or in my mind, absolutely should be locks for the Wall of Fame. I know yeah. it's tough to look back at that era and go, hey, you know what? These guys, you know, deserve it when the team couldn't make the playoffs and they could barely win seven games in a season. You but know? they had some great players on, on those teams. But they had some phenomenal yeah. players, guys who gave up their entire yeah. career to stay yeah. with this team for this city, for this franchise, for these fans, and for themselves. And right. for, the fa- you know, for the family that they made. And in my mind, if you've got three guys from the drought era who absolutely deserve it more than anyone. I would argue that, you know, uh, we, uh, let's discount special teamers for a minute. Okay. You know, so so are you are you going with are you going with your with your top 3? Top 3 right now. Okay, go go all right. So so start start from the bottom up. Bottom up. Um I yeah. would say bottom of the top 3, Lee Evans. Ooh. You know, guys who I mean I'm talking guys who never sniffed a playoff game, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Cuz Eric Molds had one, so otherwise he would be on this list, okay? Right. Um yeah, um, Lee Evans, he's he's, the, he's right there. Fred Jackson, I love him to death. My all-time favorite Buffalo Bill. He's number two, though. Okay. You know, because mm-hmm. uh, I feel like there's one guy who definitively embodies what the you know what this team is and everything that the drought represented for us. You know, I mean, uh, I think that you can't think about the drought and the way everything, the, the the way that entire era of Buffalo Bills football happened. Without thinking of that one picture in the Bills locker room in Miami of Carl Williams with his two sons, crying his eyes out as the, you know just just going absolutely feral for this brilliant yes. brilliant wonderful yeah. moment in Buffalo Bills mm-hmm. history because that moment was everything to so many of us and it was everything to him too. Man, and, I know, love Mr. Kyle forget, Williams, man. If oh. you forget everything he ever did on the field, that moment is in place and forever in in our, in our collective mm-hmm. memories, and he would yes. deserve to be on the wall for it. And yeah, he still gave us so much. Oh, he he gave us uh, what thirteen? Yeah, thirteen years. Thirteen years, man. One hundred and eighty-three yeah. games, seven worth of any person in team history. Second most of all defensive linemen. I'm sure you can guess the first. Mm. Is I mean, he, he he never quite got the respect he deserved because of the fact that the Bills won a playoff caliber team. But you can't discount his impact on the people. Yeah. I mean, six-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, one second team, two first team. I mean, the guy was, he man, he he was a rock, man. He mm-hmm. was a rock, uh, and, and and not just physically, man, but just a rock for the entire um, organization for so long. I mean, that guy was the leader, not just of the defense. I think for the whole entire team during those years, man. Kyle Williams, you remove him from the from from the team, I, I don't even think the Bills are, are even remotely as good as, as 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 they had been at some times, you know. But mm-hmm. man, I, I remember. I'm going back to to you know those 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 times, man, when you had Kyle Williams, man, and then you had like Marcel Darius next to him, and then you had Jerry Hughes, and then Mario Williams, man, like like that defensive line. Oh my gosh, man, those are just some incredible memories, man. But I absolutely love Kyle Williams. That 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 moment when he when we finally made the playoffs, mm-hmm. watching him in the locker room, man, is is it's gonna be forever etched in my memory, man. And I can't. It's it's hard for me to watch that without kind of getting teary eyed. You know what I'm saying? Because you just you just feel so much for the guy, right? And for everything that he's been through and what he's accomplished in his career. And 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 you know, you see the man like the old man scruff. He's got the he's got the beard with the gray hairs in it. You know what I'm saying? And he's just mm-hmm. he's just he's just so excited, man. And and that was an incredible moment for him and and, and Eric Wood as well. But man, Kyle Williams will oh, go down yes. as 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 one of you know the all time uh, great uh, um, um, Buffalo Bills players, uh, at, least, at least in my book. So he yeah he definitely needs to go. And the Bills, uh, Wall of Fame, and so 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 those are your top three from from the drought era. Yeah, 
What about what about from the from the golden era? Because you had you because you had put out an article, man. About I have the golden yes. Era this is a three part mini series within my Walking the Wall of Fame series, yeah. which is kind of my my bread and butter. It's what I came here to do. Yeah. Um, with Buffalo Fanatics, um, I mean, I wanted to to tell the stories of everyone on our Wall of Fame because that's that that wall represents every ounce of Bill's history we have. Yes. Um, I would say that there are plenty of uh, plenty of guys who you know who deserve a spot up there. Mm-hmm. Um, but moving on to the golden era. Yeah. Um, I would argue this one's a little bit different um, because I just said I discount special teamers, but um, to to immediately contradict myself, Mark Pike deserves credit. Okay. Um, I mean, he's the he's the all time leader in special teams tackles. Um, he's got two hundred and fifty five special teams tackles. Um, oh. He he was he was all over the place. You know, he's uh. He was, a, he was a, a former seventh round pick who made a 12 year career with, with one team. Mm-hmm. And, um, he, you know, he's in my mind, he's the kind of, I mean, you know, the way we look at Taiwan Jones today is probably the way yeah. we would have looked at Mark Pike back then, but he deserves it. You know, he's a, he, he's an incredible, incredible talent. Um, I would put him as probably an honorable mention though, um, okay. because there are two guys who are, in my mind, the definitive number three and the definitive number two all right go ahead um number two is uh thomas smith you know he uh he was a great one you know i, I know that he's 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 in my mind he was a little underrated obviously he wasn't the star in any of those you know in any of those bills teams and mm-hmm. that was you know he he came in right as the bills fell off the top rope um you know played threshold through the mid to late 90s um, he was but, he was a cornerback right Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh-huh. he was twentieth uh, overall in '93. Um, we took him. You know, it feels good hearing us get yeah. late first round draft picks. Oh man, yes. You know, yes. it's nice. It, it is. It, it, it's always a good sign. Um, you know, I'm sure this year we'll be picking thirty second. But uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you but go. Um, second place though, you you uh, yeah, you can't really go wrong with uh, Ruben Brown. Mm. You know, he's a big he, he, yeah he, yeah he may not have been you know he may, may have just narrowly missed out on on those super bowls but he was he was part of what was the best bills team would had for you know for for you know up and right up until the drought um you know he he was a three-time walter payton man of the year nominee which is you know sort of his uh his social impact on on, on the people around him mm-hmm. um and obviously there's a definitive number one as in this you know, this man should not only be on the wall of fame but the Hall of Fame. I mean, you can't tell me Cornelius Bennett doesn't deserve it. Yeah. You know, he uh, he's a, he was the second overall pick in 87, um, but the Colts couldn't sign him to their roster despite having drafted him. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it, it, it caused one of the greatest trades in NFL history to happen. Halloween 1987, we send two future first-round picks and a second-round pick to get Bennett. But... The uh, the trade was never called the Bennett trade. No, it was called the the Eric Dickerson trade. No, oh. you know, the, the, it was it was the trade. Uh, it was the trade yeah. with the Rams and the Colts that uh, right. that moved moved absolutely everything and made him you know ch- changed the entire career of one of uh, current Hall of Famer as well as Bennett, who should be a future one. No doubt, no doubt, man. So 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 you, so you've got you've got Cornelius Bennett coming in at number one. Oh yeah, and then you've got Reuben Brown. Yes, he's number two. Thomas Smith. And yeah. Mark Pike. Mark Pike. I just, I just, I just love Mark. Yeah. Pike, you know? Every yeah. every time I watch the '90s footage, he's popping. You know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of pop, man, what about what about Bryce Pop? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Bryce. No, he's. I'm, uh, just, I'm totally joking, man. <laughs> let's call him a mention. <laughs> <laughs> he's a mention. He's a yeah, mention. Yeah. There you go. There you go, man. That, that's 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 incredible work, man. That's incredible work. Um, some of those guys, man, you really dated me. I was like, man, like I, I can't even reference those guys at all, man. But definitely like like guys like Cornelius Bennett, uh, Ruben Brown. I remember vaguely, man. But but I mean, you're going back, um, in, in some time. And there and there's another error that 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 we've left out, um, that you also uh, wrote an article about. I'm gonna go ahead and, l- and let you plug that. Um, because we are an hour and 55 in yeah. and, and we are about to shut it down, man. So go ahead. Yes, man. We appreciate you for hopping on. But but let everybody know um, uh, uh, where they can find this other article that you had mentioned here as well, because you said it was a three part series. Right. Um, so if uh, this is the, 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 the third part of uh, my 
future Wall of Famers series. Um, you know, it marks the AFL and early NFL eras. You know, back when the Bills made, you know, helped do their part to make the NFL what it is today. Um, and if you if you want to read about it and all of the rest of my Wall of the Fame pieces, which is still an ongoing series, um, you can uh, find it. Uh, find it on buffalofanatics.com. Just look up Yeston Harris and you'll find all my work right there. There's a chart in every article that points to all of the other articles on the Wall of Fame. So if you need one, hit any one of those articles and you'll find everything I've got. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, Yeston. Cheers, lads. Great, man. Uh, we, we so appreciate you, man, coming on. You guys, do me a favor. Make sure you, make sure you follow my man, Yeston Harris, man. He he is, like, like, uh, like Zach had mentioned earlier, he is the resident Bills historian um, I would just love just to sit down and, and just talk some history, man, and just 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 let him just just give me knowledge, man, because I, I love the Bills and and I grew up a Bills fan, but I was you know living in Texas, I never had the chance to actually watch the Bills a whole lot. It wasn't until really we got to like the NFL Sunday Ticket and I was able to start watching them because they, you know, constantly show Cowboys games and all this kind of stuff. And so and I grew I grew up in the '90s, man. So um, I, I just kind of missed a lot a lot a lot of the games I was able to catch them you know when they're in the playoffs and all that kind of stuff but I was I just wasn't as fortunate as a lot of guys um, like yourself and others who who had the chance to watch them up and close and personal so man you guys make sure you 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 follow yes man he, he is doing a phenomenal job uh, appreciate you so very much man for, for hopping on the show Thanks um, for having me guys what's yeah well what's 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 next on the docket man what what in any any uh any articles you got? You got um, com- coming out here in the next week or so. Oof. Well, on Friday next week, I've got a I've got a piece coming out um, talking about positions to watch for the preseason. You know, and oh, nice. uh, you know, like nice. like what do you need to keep an eye on and why? Because we know the score yeah. doesn't matter for preseason. What really matters is the reps. Right. So uh, keep an eye. You know, the, it'll tell you you know who to keep an eye on and why. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Sounds good, man. Yes, and appreciate you so very much, man. Have a good uh, rest of your weekend, brother. Cheers, mate. You too. All right. All right. Fellas, man, yo, that was Yeston, man. Yeston Harris, dude, is, is 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 a wealth of knowledge, man, a wealth of, of history, Bill's history knowledge, man. And and so I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, we got the chance to bring him on the show. I wish we had uh, more time. Maybe maybe we maybe we got we got to bring him on again, so that way uh, uh, he can kind of just school us up on, on some more history because all these pieces, man, are they just they just bring you back. They, 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 if, if you if you've been a fan of the Bills, man, uh, longer than 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 five years, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like you, you're gonna you're gonna love uh, what Yeston brings from a historical uh, standpoint, mm-hmm. fellas. That that's it, man. That's that's the show. We we've almost got two hours in the books. Kev, I'm gonna start with you, man. Is there anything that 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 uh, Bills fans can look forward to uh, 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 reading from you here in the near future? Yeah, in the next few days, I will be continuing on with my positional rankings. And this week, we will be doing the linebackers. So it'll probably be the inside linebackers because a lot of the great outside linebackers were included with the pass rushers. Um, so, yeah, be on the lookout for the top 10 linebackers. There you go. And, uh, Zach, what about you, brother? Well, just uh, vibing on Twitter, you know, <laughs> editing everyone else's pieces. I'm Depending on what ha- pops up during the preseason, I may write something. We'll see, but... Just check out everyone's pieces on buffalofanatics.com and the BF Network app. There you go. Make sure you guys download that BF Network app. You've had plenty of time during this whole show, two hours in, to download that app. Go ahead and download it. Um, put notifications on. I mean, you, you can you can find everything. And, and I'm telling you, this app, we BF has got tons of material, tons of material here on this app that you are definitely going to love. But ladies and gentlemen, that is our time. We appreciate you for showing for showing up. Um, um, our apologize, our apologies, you know, for for the YouTube fans out there. Um, you weren't able to kind of watch this on YouTube, but that's all right. Just hop on to Facebook, hop on to Twitter, Periscope, do all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're still gonna get the same content, man. Um, but until next time, guys, we appreciate you. Uh, stay tuned for next week. Uh, we've got my man uh, Zbot coming in Monday. You know, the smoke break is popping off. And then, of course, you got Rico, uh, the Rico Report Tuesday. You got me on, on Wednesday, Rated Rev. Um, we've got a whole lot that's going on. And at the closer and closer we get to the regular season. And Bills are about to play in the preseason, man. Popping off. Is it? Are they playing? They're playing Saturday, right? Is it next weekend? Yeah. I was going to say, we're going to be oh, doing man. a pregame show. We just might. 11 we just, o'clock? Yeah. The game's we, at four? 
We just might be doing a pregame show, man. So you guys make sure you keep it locked right here on the best network, bringing you nothing but the best in Bill's content, man. That, that is none other than the Buffalo Fanatics Network. We can't wait to see you guys next week, man. Keep it locked right here. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, until next time, guys. God bless. Let me put on <laughs> my, my play. Here we go, baby. God bless. Go, Bills, baby. You guys enjoy the weekend. Let's go. We're out. Peace.